Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! Quadruple overtime game. Quadruple. Almost, almost quintuple. Almost quintuple. But Can it you wasn't. believe it? Yep. Almost! But it was not. It was not. And you know, uh, I don't... Uh, I was quite uh, upset when the goal went in. It was, you? Fucking, it was 155 or whatever. And I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, if I devoted this much time to this game, I want to see history. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, I want to see like six. I want this to be three in the morning. I think it was so t- far want, from history. It was though. the longest game. Was that fourth longest or sixth longest game? All sixth, time? I think. Six, Maddie. You were telling me earlier. Six. Yeah, six. And then if we get into five, we only need like a couple minutes into five. We would have gotten the fifth longest. Right. And then I was like, okay, keep pushing. Let's go. So I'm rooting for just the goalies. You're, yeah, you're rooting <laughs> against both Jesse's teams. Jesse's rooting for, for the goalies. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm rooting for Bob and I'm rooting for Freddie. And they had outstanding games. Two goalies who should be broken. Yeah. And they're just not. Like, Bob is having one of the weirdest career arcs ever. Like, I saw people like, oh, man, he had a completely normal regular season and he got hot for like, I don't know, a month, month and a half. I'm like, yeah, Jonathan Quick. Mm. That dude's going to get in the Hall of Fame because of that. I, I'm, I'm looking at having a career that's just that every year. Five total goals scored last night. I'm looking at sports interaction. Um, there is a, a prop there under Dangles Doozies where you can do total series goals. So their number is 33 and a half. So if this series goes, you'd have to go six or seven games to even hit. 33 goals. So there was and a, it's one game. So or it's I guess it's two and a two and a quarter games that they played last night. There was an interesting one though, because there's been a lot of blowouts. So obviously, you know, those games don't go to overtime. But uh, I think it was Rachel Dory was posting about she had all these parlays based on like hits and shots and and whatever. And yeah, if a game goes to quadruple overtime, you're gonna hit on all all of them, right? But, because right, unless last, you got more night. than two games worth of playtime. But last night, in terms of shots, it wasn't crazy. What, like, what did, did it end team, up being? Did either team hit the sixty shot? Yeah, mark? Bobrovsky made sixty six saves, so I think okay. sixty eight so, to, if I'm not mistaken, sixty. Yeah, your view of this Florida, game depends on when you went to bed. Sixty eight to six. <laughs> Six, 16 so, minutes without one yeah, shot, man. Yeah. Because at, it was like in the third OT, I want to say, the shots like weren't crazy. They no. were like a regular three-period game. It finished 65 shots for the Hurricanes and 60 for the Panthers. I mean, they played they played uh, seven periods, so that's uh, about oh, in line. And the Panthers got more penalty minutes than the Hurricanes? That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta yeah. stop doing that man paul maurice finding out that you can be called for a penalty in the playoffs it must be tough for him oh. they're winning the cup eh oh yeah yeah, yeah no yeah. they're uh yeah i'm, I'm so glad i took them in my prediction i'm like this is i'm like I, I, yeah. li- listen we saw what they did to boston we saw how they dismantled the leafs man uh uh bobrovsky is on what let me let me read this because you guys are spe- so wrong speaking of the leafs let's make it about them let Shall me guess we? jesse vegas kevin kevin papetti no carolina in this series that's who oh. i'm picking mm. he said great game going on <laughs> seth jarvis who was taken with the pick from the marlow deal opened the scoring former leafs pick carter verhage responded with a goal and an assist former leafs player stefan noson has now tied it and frederick anderson is looking for the win stefan noson's amazing nason Nathan, or, sorry, Stephen, it's spelled yeah, no. Stephen, lose him? Stephen Nason's amazing. Dude, so he, do you even remember how the Leafs got him? No, but I do remember that we got him and we were like, ah, whatever. He played one game. He's big and belligerent and we decided can't have that. Um, he friggin uh, was a, like a dump basically from, I'm trying to even remember the team, but the Leafs got him. As part of the three-way deal. Oh, they got him from the Sharks in the three-way deal for Felino. Really? And he played one or two games. And that was it. That was it. Then wow. the next season, he went to, I want to say it was Charlotte, whatever the Hurricanes minor league team is, and decided, I'm going to tear this league limb from limb. I'm just going to eat everyone alive in front of their families and won the championship and 
got called up and played on their top power play somehow. Unbelievable. And yeah, and he's a late bloomer. I remember talking about him on like draft preview shows on like a college radio station with Fisher in, in like 2010. Yeah, I remember that. Maybe like and you talk about. Late I think bloomers. you guys streamed like, that on video, too, on the Internet. Oh, Did you not? Man. We dude, we we had a show where we had like Tyler Sagan, Taylor Hall, Nazem Kadri, Tyson Berry. Uh, and it was on U of T Scarborough's. <laughs> like, it's no, crazy. No one heard the thing. Live. And it was called the Steve Dangle show. Yeah, which is actually funnily enough. That was why we couldn't call this the Steve Dangle show. We called it the Steve Dangle podcast because the Steve Dangle show had already existed. And so we decided not to go with that. And that was that's that's the that's a true story. And there was a there was one night where I think it was Sagan agreed to come on. He didn't answer. So Kadri as in a pinch agreed to come on. Wow. And then Sagan called me during the Kadri interview and we got them both. (laughs) <laughs> so we were having like better guests than like, you know, half of the friggin' stations around the city. Amazing. Just be- and it was because of the junior hockey show that because you had all the phone numbers. because I had all their phone numbers. I don't remember how I got Nas's because I refused to have him on the show because the London Knights were such assholes to me. Oh, were they? <laughs> yeah, I think I've told that story before. What? Like their PR team or what? Uh, I don't remember who it was, but they're um I guess we're going on a run through yeah, the field right now. But uh, no, uh, uh, there were some teams. So, okay, let's back up. Full context. My first paid gig in this industry was 75 bucks a week. Uh, RBC Junior Hockey Magazine. I think it's got a new sponsor now, but Gino Retta was the host. Um, and we would talk to like a high profile um major junior guest every week. And we would have some junior A guys as well. And I was great at guessing too, like who the biggest players were going to be. Like not many players are drafted at a junior A, but like we had Brandon Peary on. Oh, okay. Who, like, yeah, he, made, he had a career. Nailed it. Right. Um, so Tavares was supposed to go first overall that year and getting him was hard. There were some really good teams in junior that were happy to give you all their guys. The Windsor Spitfires were my best friends. They were awesome. The, can I have Ryan Ellis? Can I have Taylor Hall? Can I have Adam Henrique? Can I have Zach Cassian? Can I have, oh, and they would just give me all of them. It was awesome. Although I think Cassian was on the Pete's that year. He was on the Spits the next. Call the London Knights. And God, they were so good. And they were so much better than you. And yeah. they were not afraid to let you know it. And the only other team that gave me difficulty was the Vancouver Giants, but like they would, they'd still gave me guys. But the London Knights were such a pain in the ass. And they demanded a uh, pre interview, which very few teams did. But I was like, okay, fine. I'll tell you my stupid questions for John Tavares. And uh, they didn't answer the phone when the pre interview was supposed oh, to happen. And they God. wouldn't answer the phone. And I kept calling them because I was a full time student who had homework to do and class to go to and I think a job at the time. I also was trying to put together this show. And um, the guy finally answered the phone and he gave me attitude. He goes, yeah, I got your call. I also got the other six. Oh. And I unloaded on him. Did you? Uh, and I've never done that. I like at, at the time I was 20, 21. And like there were a handful of players we had on the show, the major junior show that were older than I was. And, uh, I unloaded on the guy and I'd never done that professionally. And I was, it's easy to do that when you're a hundred percent in the right. <laughs> and yeah. he actually called me back later and apologized and was like, oh yeah. And, yeah. And that's and, cool. Yeah. yeah that, well, that's, and that's he really goes, cool. he goes, any London Knights player you want to have, uh, you call me and, uh, I'll answer. That's cool. And I go, great. That, that's pro. I love that. Yeah. Except I wasn't a pro. I yeah. was a, basically a child and I went, cool. We're never, and I didn't tell him this, but in my mind, I'm like, we're never having a London night on for the rest of the year. <laughs> oh, the right thing to do would be have them all on. I know. So that's so why you went complete. You a dollar for this master. You went complete sour grapes, and we're like, "Fuck you!" Yeah. Even though you're apologizing and admitting you were wrong, I'm still upset. Yep. Oh no! Wow. Steve. I know. No. And oh, listen, no. I'm older now, and <laughs> I learned a harsh lesson because 
the Leafs had a really high pick that year. And I was like, oh man, this is going to be really cool. Like I'm probably like 90%, 99% going to be able to get an interview with whoever the Leafs pick. And they picked fucking Kadri. From the London Knights. From the London Knights. Yeah. And then who he, I refuse to have on the show because the London Knights were assholes. suck it up and yeah. you just have them on. Well, I know that now. There's also, yeah. I know there's that also now. Like age, there's like an age you reach where apologies actually start to matter. Um, like like when you're that young, you're, full, you're so full of piss and vinegar that you're like, yeah, I don't need to do that. And you realize as you get older that life is collaborative and people fuck up and people treat you like shit. And you have to sometimes either suck that up or r- create a new boundary with them. And then you can have a really great relationship afterwards. And how many, and the reason they're protective of this player is He's everyone great. has wanted a piece of John Tavares since he was 14 years old, mm-hmm. right? So was, was JT yeah. not a, he was a- Exceptional status. Exceptional, that's the word I was looking for. He was Thank one you. of the first ones. Yeah. Maybe the first. No, no. Crosby was before him. Yeah. Mm, um, yeah, no, no. Yeah, for, right, you're right. right. You're four years older than him. Yeah, I can't remember. Was Crosby the first one? No, 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 no. So. no. There was, there was guys. There's very, that. very few players had been granted, but JT was one of them. Yeah, and I wouldn't have <laughs> Katri on, and I would regret it. What? How did we get to this? Well, we're just chatting. Uh, I can't, so I can't remember. So with F- Florida, Carolina. Were any was anyone <laughs> in this series on that team? To th- oh, anyway, so yeah, Stefan Nason, I'm pretty sure was drafted already. Yeah, no, dude, dude was unreal last sure. night, and and like Carolina plays this game where they don't they don't need the puck at all. You know, they they give it up to the other to to Florida all day long, and then Florida's able to play their game where they give up the puck and they dump and chase and they try and hit you really hard and and come back with it and then take advantage of the opportunity. So they just kept playing back and well, forth this very similar hockey. And um, I forget who said I think it was Aho who said it uh, going into no I think it might have been Barkov going into the second intermission. He's like they they play like us, and like that was the intermission. Uh, interview. Not really though. Not really. Canes are different. Canes have structure. Well, they're able the, to. The, the, the Florida Panthers are a drunk person throwing fists at the bar. And 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 they, for some reason, you know, sometimes drunk people throwing fists at the bar connect on more than one. And they are connecting this are they, playoff. Uh, they're killing it. Are they Brad Pitt and Snatch? I, they must be. Like, they must be. The Carolina they, Hurricanes. Have and they will season. get their fucking caravan for their mark. Exactly. By the way, do you guys want to know <laughs> all the 15-year-old OHL players ever? Because I have a list. Oh, sure. Yep. Do you care? Or at least, well, and then okay. I got something on the, we're talking about the hits. Yeah. And we're talking about the numbers and the stats, but I'll bring it up after you do that. Uh, okay. So a bunch of people you'd never heard of. Craig Wilson, Pierre Dupuis, Keith Whitmore, Jeff Smith, Tim Helmer, Chris McLean, Dave McLean. Uh, there's a McLean and McLean, by the way. Bob Jones, Jeff Triano. Uh, Darcy Cahill, uh, Mike Tomlinson, Adam Malucci, uh, Richard Power, Larry so- Shaw, Keith Gretzky, oh. uh, Sean Day, Rico Fat. Sean Day. Yeah, I remember Sean Day. Uh, Aaron Eckblad, Kirk Muller, uh, Michael Misa, who was just granted it this year. So this isn't in order at all. Uh, Connor McDavid. No, these are just in, in uh, these are just in total points, actually, is the way. Uh, uh, Connor McDavid, Shane Wright uh, in last year, two years ago, three years ago. Jason Spezza and John Tavares. Tavares is the most successful player at 15 in the OHL with 77 points in 65 games. Spezza was 71. Wow. Uh, McDavid had 66 in 63. Um so, so Jesse, what do you want to say on the hits? So, hits last night, the totals that ended up being in seven periods of hockey, 46 for the Panthers, 35 for the Hurricanes. That's a, that's a lot of hits. Mm-hmm. But it's really not a lot of hits. Considering it was uh, seven periods? Seven periods of hockey. <laughs> so, I pull up two random games from these playoffs. Leafs game one versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. Hits totals. 42 for the Leafs, 39 for the Lightning. Is that more? That's uh, more on the Lightning side. Lightning had more than the Hurricanes, who finished with 35, and the Leafs were very close to the uh, Panthers, who had 46, and the Leafs had 42. I'll pull up another random game. Game game one, Leafs-Panthers guantee had more. Here's uh, Leafs-Lightning game four. Leafs won at 5-4 in overtime. Mm. Leafs finished with 46 hits. No, lightning finished with 45 hits. Oh, wow. There's an instance hit. where both teams, the Panthers finished with 46 last night. So, but one team tied, one was one shy. Wow. There, it's not as physical of a series, but everything, every hit impacts. It feels like it's more, you know, when they happen in the Carolina Panthers game, but it's not as physical as we think. 
I uh, I was getting a kick out of um, that. Gudis did some shit behind the net, and people were posting about it. And how is he allowed to do this? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. It's, is uh, Gudis is a dirty player? Opinions valid now? <laughs> are, th- are those valid now? Am I supposed to listen? Am I supposed to care about what he does to your team now? Are we allowed to have them because you're playing somebody besides the Leafs? Man, that sounds like uh, you should uh, suck it up. <laughs> get, get good. Am I right, Adam? That's right. Yeah. High five. Uh, yeah. Get, get good. good. Loser. Uh, Seth Jarvis. <laughs> Uh, did open the scoring second period. It was sort of all Panthers, Barkov and Verhage score. And then here's the thing: it's it happens within the first, or it happens within two minutes of each other. So you go from being up one to down one within a couple minutes, and that has to be a kick in the groin. And Welcome then come to play in the Panthers. <laughs> Carolina comes out strong in the third, about three and a half minutes in. Stefan Nosen scores. Neither team gets it done. Now let's talk about the first overtime. You're, you're sorry, Nason. Just Nason, to follow up me. on what I said earlier. First round pick, twenty first overall, twenty eleven. Who? Sens. No way. Sens. Huh. Never played a game for them. Uh, that that Nason goal came because Sam Bennett took a boarding penalty. And you don't know uh, how hard I was rooting for that call to be the turning and deciding factor of the game. Holy crap, I, I was rooting against Sam Bennett. They're winning the cup. Like, he fucking, he took a bad boarding penalty. Carolina gets the power play goal. And I'm like, yes, it's retribution. And then they end up winning anyways. So, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> there is no justice. There, there is, is no, no hockey there's no God. justice. No justice, the no peace. The gods don't like us. <laughs> uh, so, Lomberg appeared to score the winning goal. Um, he, now. I was surprised. Uh. So he beat Jalen Chatfield in like a bit of a battle, and then he scored on Freddie Anderson two and a half minutes into the first overtime. But Carolina successfully challenged for goaltender interference. Replayed shows that Florida's Colin White, while being bumped by Carolina's Jack Drury, uh, made skate to skate contact with Anderson, then bumping him as Anderson ended up on all fours on the other side of the crease before Lomberg's shot went in. What did we think about the called back goal? I mean, that's what goaltender interference probably ought to be. Um, but considering the stuff that is let go, like in the regular season, forget the, this. Forget the playoffs. Yeah, this is not a conversation about playoff roughness and belligerence. Um, like ha- Habs fans have a long memory, um, <laughs> and they they keep bringing up the uh, the uh, I think it was Kevin Hayes dragging Carey Price out of the net by the pads. Mm -hmm. And this is what gets called back as an overtime winner as well. Now, this is a high pressure situation because it's, I believe, I don't even know if Carolina had a challenge because it's uh, automatically reviewed. Yeah, I don't think it was an actual challenge, right? I don't know, but it's automatically reviewed. So this is, I mean, the game is officially in NHL head office's hands, you can't get this wrong. Or actually, no, it's up to the officials. NHL head office just shows them the overhead, don't they? Yeah, the the situation room works where the on ice officials always get the final say, but like they're talking back and forth. If the guy next sitting next to Gary is like, hey, you know what? That's that's goaltender interference. You probably should just say it's goaltender interference on the ice, even though it's it's your call. Yeah, they're <sighs> I'm surprised, but I'll, I'll tell you why it's good. Uh, because if that is not goaltender interference, do you know how many accidentally on purpose contact with goalies? Yeah, goalies? you, you got to mm-hmm. call that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to call that. Dude, Keith Primo would have scored 75 goals a year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, he was. I keep bringing him up. He was the king of the I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> that dude would regularly do the put him in a coffin like right on top of ed (laughs) belfort and just like break all your bones and then celebrate over top of you while the goal counted because it's the 90s right here was the uh the habs one you're referencing that's unbelievable yeah so the i I believe the ruling at the time and dave jackson was on uh, twitter replying to habs fans saying that uh the let me guess the rest were right the contact came outside of the blue paint and that that was the ruling. But so but is 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 the rule goaltender interference or is it goaltender ir- interference inside the blue paint? Yes. <laughs> well, like okay, goalies can't just go and do whatever. I know, wants. but it's on the play. 
if continuation can exist, then I think continuation of goaltenders trying to make a play outside of the crease can exist too. I'm not talking about like they're trying to clear it and you score and you like crush them with an elbow and then score. Like I feel Why like not? that. Well, if, I mean, if I mean, a goalie's listen, behind listen, the net, if you crush a goalie behind the net, it's completely you're out. Like you're out. You're gonna get your your you're, you're gonna get shit kicked by the other team. The refs are gonna throw the book Why? at you. But if you Why? If, it's allowed. If you elbow it's a goalie in the crease, usually it's cool. <laughs> yeah. So well, if you hit a goalie behind the net and you get a penalty, why? Because it's I don't I mean is it goaltender interference or is it just interference? I don't know. You're allowed yeah. to t- you're allowed to touch the goalie outside the blue paint, so nothing. Yeah, but you can't, matters, you can't so. pile drive him. No, you can only oh. hit him with your skate or your stick or something. Yeah. You so can it's give slightly inconvenience him, basically. Give him, a, give him a little whack on the pads. <laughs> Dude, I am oh. made up rules. <laughs> I am fascinated by how the rest of the series goes yeah. because it's not just that it went quadruple overtime, almost quintuple. Um, it's the goalies in there are older and injury prone. Like for as great as Bobrovsky's been, He's had a lot of injuries, and Freddie Anderson is always fighting something. Like, there's no guarantee these guys even start game two. No. As for how good that I'm not saying either team is going to make the decision. You know what? We need <laughs> Alex Lyon and Pyotr Kachekov. No, I'm saying they might be busted up a little bit, and I wouldn't be surprised to see one of them go down to an injury. Both of them are playing the best hockey of their entire careers. Probably at the exact same time, and they look phenomenal, man. Yeah, but I'm just, I'm just saying. I mean, fuck, Bobrovsky might have been injured on the celebration. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? Which, uh, which guys, part? guys, guys, breaking news. <gasps> uh, Kyle Dubas will not return as Leafs general manager. I knew it. Well, at least it happened wow. during our show. Yeah, who had it? CJ, CJ had it. Who, wow. Okay, for the looks like CJ had it. For everyone watching, who's that? Uh, Chris Johnston, I think, had it, and Alf Fried has Fried has it too, but it's saying the same minute. So, do we want <laughs> to pause? Do no, we want to talk about it? What are we about? Do we want to? What is there to pause? What I can mean, we I'm, talk about it. I'm glad we're basically at the end of this conversation, um, like with last night's game. No, I think. I mean, listen, we'll get to it in a second. Let's talk about the end. Let's talk about the end <laughs> yeah. of the game. Okay. No, it's Steve, Steve, this show right now that we are you are listening to, loyal listener, you and your headphones, is not live. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I guess we should maybe talk about the OT winner. <laughs> That's what I so, was saying. Like, why so it? when this comes out, it doesn't matter if we did this right now. <laughs> yeah, but it's exciting. Get excited. <laughs> yeah, it's not, Damn it. This isn't a live show, people. I don't know if you figured this out. So uh obviously um the game became messier and messier. As the it's, uh, Messier, oh sorry, it became Messier and Messier. Uh, as <laughs> the as the periods went on, like just just an absolute gong show. Uh, but it was with bad hockey. Thirteen seconds left. Oh, I mean, in the fourth overtime. It's never a good one, is it? No, but it's in the last minute. <laughs> yeah. What do I always say about the Panthers, especially in the last minute? Is they'll no they'll, quit. What was it? They'll get you. What, what was the backhand? It'll it'll get you. Yeah, that's right. The diamond back. The diamond back. It'll get Jim you. Jim Dunn. It'll get you. Matthew Kachuk, absolute dagger. Thirteen seconds to go. And let, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this. Okay, so you waited all intermission between because you've watched now two hockey games in a row, and then you've watched your third first period. <laughs> yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you've and you're waiting to get to the se- the next intermission. You're like, God, I hope. I hope I hope the bars remain like, you know, they're not serving booze, but please give me a coffee. There was a guy falling asleep behind the Carolina Hurricanes. Bench. We all hilarious. saw him mm-hmm. like who could blame him. Yeah. So you're thinking, OK, if we could just get to this. Oh, 13 seconds to go that forget dagger to the, the Carolina Hurricanes. If they even remember it this morning, I like I, I they, they're probably so, already asleep. They were probably so tired, but well, they were laughing. The pa- the after the game, the Panthers found it funny the further it went and they didn't know what period of overtime it was. It's almost like when you're um they're winning the cup. When you're when you're at a sleepover and you're and you're you're up late and for the like the first time ever and you get the giggles. That seems like what it oh. was for the Panthers. Well, like you ever been in a situation with your friends where you're screwed and then you all just start to laugh. Yeah. It's the Panthers are just like, "We're the Florida Panthers." Isn't that what, nuts? What are we doing here? <laughs> yo, yo, you know it'd be hilarious. Let's win the cup. For almost no good reason. For yeah. no perceptible reason. Let's win the Stanley Cup. <laughs> and who do we get in the first round? 
Oh my god, we got the Bruins. That's fucking hilarious. Let's do it. No. What? <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Yo, you know what'd be so funny is if we beat the Bruins right now. <laughs> with, and then they do it. And they did it. With the four OTs last night, I think uh, two two people deserve special shout outs. One is the fans in the building. Yes. Because they it was, that building was not empty by that fourth overtime. Well, a lot of people stuck around and the crowd was still I wouldn't say that they were electric by the end. Like you'd hear <laughs> like there'd be a great save and it'd be like, yeah. What would the storm <laughs> surge have been like if they won? <laughs> right. <laughs> but they were there and that matters. And through periods one through like four, that crowd in Carolina is amazing. Uh, like I would love to see a game down there. That sounds like a great atmosphere. And then also special shout out to uh, Wade Minter, who is the yep. PA address announcer, who was just making dad jokes all night. Uh, he was saying, get ready for the seventh intermission stretch was yeah. a great one. Uh, during the, I think the fifth intermission, he apologized to the crowd. He's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is the fifth intermission. <laughs> hilarious. Uh, great, jo- great job by that. He arena staff. loves his job. Ba- I yeah. was all I could think watching that, uh, was Mike Babcock would for sure have a skate at eight o'clock the next morning. Oh. oh, it's like he'd ask them to pause the game so he could have this game. Yeah, it's so like, yeah. like I hope those guys got to sleep in. Uh, Mark Lazarus, who I believe was there covering the game, uh, he was saying that after he's like, there's some science to this and I don't get it. But after the game, guys were on the bikes. Oh, oh, <laughs> no, uh, because otherwise you got to flush your legs would not be able to move the next day. No, yeah, I yeah. understand that. Yeah, I understand that. And it's so counterintuitive mm-hmm. but no like uh no they they their legs would be cement the next day Unreal. um i i remember uh uh the speed skaters the hamlin brothers for team canada um one of the things i talked about with them at the olympics in 2010 is they had like a gold medal race and then i think it was like 48 hours in between or something then another gold medal race and they rode the bikes and i remember being like, I don't know, 21 and being like, what, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, aren't you exhausted? And they were basically like, yeah, but we have to, we have to, to, in order to get the, um, what's, what's the stuff, lactic acid mm-hmm. off of our muscles. We had to cycle it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, literally cycle it out. Um, yeah. and that's, and then they ended up winning a bunch of gold medals. So I guess that's what you're supposed to do. I think it was Slavin. I don't have the, the the stat i saw on the broadcast but i think it was he skated i think it was nine miles wow in terms of, of wow. just distance last night that's <laughs> the the puck tracking and the player tracking stuff that we're going to see so much more of. yeah i'm excited that's for the that. stuff we need like well, that's awesome well think about it so we all forget what course he is like mm-hmm. it's not just to measure uh puck possession Corsi was invented by Jim Corsi, literally. I want to say he was the former goalie coach of the Sabres. It was to measure goalie workload. So the amount of shot attempts Mm -hmm. on a goaltender, um, you know, that's they have to flex every time that a puck is coming. So even if the shot doesn't make it through, it's exhausting on their body. We're going to find out um, with player tracking how far these guys go, but also like average speed. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be able to measure like calories spent or something like that. And there's going to be some defenders who are really good at sort of coasting. So even though they're going really far throughout the course of a game, they're good at conserving their energy. But we're going to find out like who the biggest animal in the NHL is yeah. because they travel the same distance, but they're going a million miles an hour. Up there has got to be just based on his performance last night, Brent Burns. Like the dude was everywhere at all times. I think he led the game in, in block shots. He had 10, 10 block shots for Burns. He was pinching so hard in a lot of cases just to try and end the game. The dude's an animal. You want to talk? He's 37. Shots? You guys want to talk block shots? Let's talk about Freddie Anderson. Oh, yeah. Shitty play. That's Freddie his job, Anderson. though, Adam. <laughs> 1.73 goals uh, saved above expected. But according to Shayna, Shayna Goldman, who we love, mm-hmm. the star of the night is Sergei Bobrovsky, who earned a goal save above expected of 5.34 against 107 unblocked shots per evolving hockey, which means... Sergei Bobrovsky is going to win the Conn Smythe in 2023. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Man. why do we analyze hockey? Well, because it's fun. 
And 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 here's the it's thing. It's a what, tremendous waste the of thing, time. Well, exactly. That's the thing about hockey is that <laughs> invariably you're wasting your time, but it's fun. And it ranks, I think, top it is top two. The second highest single game performance in the analytics era. Is the first one Corpusello? Uh let me just, just hang on. Uh hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. In the quintuple overtime bubble game? Uh, oh yeah, that's probably a good. One. No, it's not. How? What is that? The can you you will never believe this. Um, is it a, if it's a leaf, I'm going to lose. All, my no, head. altogether, Carolina <laughs> generated seven point. This is from the Athletic, and Shana Shana wrote this. Uh, Carolina generated seven point three four expected goals for, according to Evolving Hockey. So they should have had seven goals last night, <laughs> which ranks highly for a single game performance. The the second highest. Pittsburgh's eight fifty in game one of round one, the series versus the Rangers last year, holds the current record. Uh, against that wow. workload, Bobrovsky saved 5.34 goals above, saved above expected. That ranks second in the analytics era behind, who did you say? Uh, it better not be the lead. Igor? Oh, Corpusalo. Corpusalo? In the bubble. No. Igor? No. Uh -huh. No. Shesterkin is third against the Penguins last year. You see? No. Sorokin? Somebody you would not... Go off the board. Andrew Hammond had a ridiculous game. Are we talking, are they currently hey. an active goalie? They are. Goaltender. Okay. That, that narrows and it they're down still with their current team. They're still with the team they did it with. Oh, still with the team they did it with. And and it's a bonkers number that this player had. Bonkers. I mean, why haven't I guessed Vasilevsky? Let me tell you, this this no. player he was said so, off the board. This player was so good, they ruined the next two years, three years of this franchise because they were so good. This franchise assumed then that they were good. Soros. No, I already said that. Oh, they assumed a they were good. Chicago they, goal this, this goalie was so good that the franchise said, we're super good. And they stuck to their plan. And now they're horrible. Thatcher Thatcher Demko. Demko. That's right. Hey! Thatcher was Demko. it in the bubble? Oh, that's right. The 2020 season. Hey. Thatcher Demko. <laughs> <laughs> Same moment. <Yeah. laughs> I was waiting for my high five for um, quite a while. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Montour, Forsling, and Burns all played over 54 minutes with Montour playing 57.5 minutes in all situations. That's so dumb. Yeah. Crazy. That's so dumb. Uh, it is the sixth longest overtime, the longest being uh, Detroit and Montreal Maroons in 1936. Ah. Uh, the second longest is in 1933. Toronto beat Boston. How about that? Hey. Uh, in a <laughs> semifinal. Uh, the third longest is May 4th, 2000. Philly and Pittsburgh, uh, which was 92 minutes long. August 11th, 2020. Tampa Bay, Columbus. Yep. Uh, which Tampa Bay won. And then, of course, the fifth, uh, Anaheim, Dallas in 2003. That's Mike Babcock in the bench. Uh, the uh, the bubble uh, Blue Jackets lightning game, I was reminded from uh, that there was a funny tweet from, from the Hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Because it was in the bubble, there was supposed to be another game on that ice surface mm -hmm. that night. Yeah, and they and couldn't do it. I think they had to push it back. Yeah. Because the Hurricanes tweeted, they're like, uh, like get off the ice. <laughs> we have a game to play. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Ah. You know what I find frustrating? Hosting a show with me. No, I <laughs> love hosting a show with both of you. I've loved it the entire what was time. That? I love you guys. I love you guys. No, that? I love you guys. <laughs> no, I love that. You know what I, I find frustrating, though, is when I'm sitting on the dock on a long weekend and I have to get up to get another beer. And I look at I look at my can and I go, why can't you be bigger? That's not how that works. I can't, you, you need to be bigger in Muskoka you, you know what they call no. the phenomenon? Muskoka. Doc block. Exactly. Uh, thank you. Adam, so Adam, Murray, stop solve lying. Solve that problem for me. What is, stop why lying. Why am I lying? How am I lying? You call your butler to You're get right. you a new tread light. Fair enough. You don't have to get up from your dock. You say, Jeeves, get me a tread light. Here's the problem with Jeeves is that he charges by the beer. So every time he has to go get one, that costs me at least $20. I don't, I think... <laughs> That's not how butlers work. I don't know. But not that I would know. Listen, you how would, would you know? Exactly. Yeah, we should listen to you, butler man. Mine is like a pay-as-you-go butler, okay? <laughs> so anyway, long story short, tread lightly from Muskoka Brewery. It's locally brewed. It's not owned by a gigantic conglomerate. It's actually done by 200 people that live in Muskoka. A conglomerate like Adam Wild Business. That's right. That's right. It's also <laughs> um, it's available at the LCBO, the beer store, grocery stores. Great light beer to unwind with after your day at work. Or on your dock 
or your balcony during the long weekend, which we or love. your yacht, or your yacht could be great on a yacht. Did you see Bezos on his yacht? Oh my God! Can you guys wrap this so I can I'm drink sorry. this? All right, Muskoka Brewery. Hey, and they've also got the extra large can, which is what my whole point was in the beginning. The can is. Are you ready? Five hundred and sixty-eight milliliters. Grab it this long weekend, and remember, Muskoka Brewery is independently owned and operated in the heart of Muskoka, employing a team of over one hundred and twenty people. A true Canadian crafted beer, and you can visit the tap room in Bracebridge off of Highway 11 at 118. Fresh beer on tap to go and tours available with live music on weekends throughout Woo! the summer. Hey, how's that playoff beat? It's gone. You shaved it <sighs> off of my face. What'd you use to shave it? Manscaped. That's right. <laughs> and boy, look at look at how great they, I mean, the, the, the stubble is coming back in, but it's coming right. in so evenly. Even you, Jesse. It's yeah, yeah. No, I use the, the beard trimmer that they got. Uh, I love the little dial where you just, you flick it and mm -hmm. that, that's the, it changes the uh, mounts you're cutting off. It's I, perfect. I feel like a four today. Well, that would, oh, maybe 0.5. I got a meeting. <laughs> that is, that is, guys, that is called the Weed Whacker 2.0. Uh, it's got uh, better shape and a better motor uh, than anybody else. And it's really, really good for things like not just that, but there's also the ear. They've got your, your ear and nose trimmer as well. Uh, the uh, uh, beard preserver, all a part of the performance package that you can get with Manscaped. So, Adam, I'm talking about the beard hedger. Oh, that's, that's the beard one. Oh, that's, that's the yeah, beard one. Yeah. Okay, you're right. talking about the weed whackers like you do the other. Oh, okay. Yeah, when you right. said the weed whacker, I'm like, yeah. I don't think it is. Okay. No. Well, listen, the beard, <laughs> the beard hedger pro kit. There this kit go. has bomb shampoo, conditioner, and oils you need to keep presentable or not presentable in Steve's case. Uh, <laughs> and the trimmer you need when it's finally time to cut. Bummer. Get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code. Dangle. That's right. At manscaped.com, it's 20% off free shipping. Promo code DANGLE, D-A-N-G-L-E, manscaped.com. Pick a winner, hit the playoff push, and use Manscaped to shave that bush. So, guys, Kyle Dubas is out as the, as the Maple Leafs GM. I want to read you, wow. um, I want to read you the Leafs PR uh, uh, because there was a there's an interesting wrinkle to this already. Cardinal official. No, seriously, this is a real. There's a real wrinkle to this. Okay. Brandon Shanahan announced today the club has decided to part ways with general manager Kyle Dubas. Okay. The club has decided to part ways with Kyle Dubas. Yeah, the the club is making it seem because because here's what we know. We know that the extension was being worked on and that it was pretty much worked out. We know that we went to the press conference and Dubas said, "I recently found out how hard this was on my family." And we should have known, according to CJ, by Tuesday or Wednesday, and it's now Friday and we're finding out, due, uh, Shanahan is due to speak at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Um, because, of course, it has to be a Friday news dump, a-holes. It's a long weekend. Um, I, listen, they did it during the show. We couldn't have asked for Yeah, that, I guess, I guess. But I do think it's relevant that they say the club has decided to part ways with him. Which should be the uh, death knell in this being a process-driven organization. Never has been, never was. Uh, what do you mean? What? Well, and it's and it's from like we know this because of CJ's insights into the organization. Mm -hmm. After the 2019 loss to Boston, after the Game Seven loss, CJ said, after the 2019 loss, it was obvious to me, definitely, because yeah. I went on a big rant. That was the time to fire Mike Babcock. Mm -hmm. And CJ said, they're not going to do it. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, then that's going to ruin next season. And that's exactly what it did. Um, sure, Sheldon Keefe came in and was hot for a while, but the team was very clearly out of sorts. Um, you know, they lost to Columbus in the bubble. They probably, they may not have even made the playoffs. But what CJ said kept Babcock in charge was game five mm -hmm. against the Bruins. So you had dozens and dozens and dozens of games worth of data of this guy losing his way. Dubas yelling at Shanahan. Mm -hmm. Well, that was that was afterward. Mm -hmm. there, there was the famous clip of Dubas saying he has to know they figured out something, something, something. Yes. He started. Yes. He started the wrong guys in overtime in yes. the game against the Blue Jackets. Uh, but game five against the Bruins was tight and they won a tight playoff game and that was progress and that was something they hadn't done and that's why they stuck with Babcock despite all other evidence saying this guy's cooked at very least in this city 
with this group. Fast forward. They beat Tampa. <clears throat> when did CJ say the decision was made to extend Kyle Dubas? After the series in Tampa. After the series in Tampa. Mm-hmm. They lose in five games to Florida. So five games later, mm -hmm. it's up in the air, but we understand he likely has a contract offer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after a poor showing at a press conference, mm -hmm. they decide not to bring him back. They got new information. They got new information, and it was one piece of information, and I guess that information was important enough to them mm -hmm. that they decided we can't do this. Yeah. So, like, I'm, I'm not even criticizing them for it. It What I'm doing is I'm showing you that this is a team done screwing around. Okay. And I think it's a team done waiting. I, I am well, not. Well, it's a board done waiting. It's a board done waiting. And believe me, I am not trying to position this as a good thing. I don't know if it's a bad thing either. Well, this. But when teams. Get, listen, the, the Leafs have an extremely tight deadline right now. They have five weeks to make enormous decisions. Five weeks until Marner's no move clause kicks in. Five weeks until they're able to sign Matthews to an extension. Five weeks until they're able to sign Nylander to an extension. Uh, what are we doing with the coach? Who are we picking in the draft? Um, I guess Shanahan is staying. Well, yep. I don't know. For now. So, so, But they're done screwing around. They just had a... a really disheartening playoff loss. And I think this team is in its most emotional state. It's been in, in a number of years through all of the first round defeats and everything through the Montreal series. I think there's a really good chance. Your favorite team is going to be torn apart. I have a, I have a, uh, or least favorite team. And that's hilarious. You might be one of those people that's like, great, they're done screwing around. And that sounds good on the surface. Um, However, I think be careful here because the Blackhawks well, were done screwing around when they lost to Nashville in 2016 and, and they ruined the franchise. Right. Exactly. And I think you have to remember what the Leafs were before 2015. Uh, and from about 2004 to 2015, this franchise was I, I, I'm shocked they could sell tickets. <laughs> when you look at the when you look at the, the go look at the rosters in like 20, 2008. You know, who was the second line center behind Mats? Poor Mats, eh? He's a freaking saint. He never oh. he never bitched once about the horrendous mismanagement this this organization went through under John Ferguson Jr. I count Brian Burke on that, although I felt like things were getting better. And then the board didn't like when when you know when the pigeon plan uh sold it and and Rogers and Bell bought into it. He refused to trade. What? Mats, what's the matter with you? Yeah. Like forget, you know, there's a number of Leaf fans who still hold it against him that he refused to trade so the Leafs could get assets. Okay, okay. Leaving the assets aside, Mats! Yeah. Don't you want to win? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Yeah. You, well, you, you, you got you gotta, That's a golden ticket. You're free. Be free, Genie. <laughs> you, you don't have to play for this godforsaken team anymore. And he said, no. J.S. O'Ban is my starting goalie. Let's go. Yeah. Mats! You've lost your mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I'm concerned here for a few reasons. People are, I'm looking at the reactions on Twitter and stuff. I'm concerned here for a few reasons. Number one, you've got a Maple Leafs board that's not uh, not thrilled about how things have gone. And rightly so. If you're a Leafs fan and you're thrilled about their playoff success, uh, you shouldn't be. I, uh, this is not good enough. And I don't think you'd find many that are. No. But, but one thing this organization is that it was not 10 years ago is solid from the ECHL to the AHL to the NHL. They have they the Leafs used to be maligned and you guys may not remember this because now we're now we're in our mid 30s and we're old. We're boomers now. And 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 this is a team that used to have regular there used to be regular articles written about how bad the medical staff was. There used to be regular articles written about how lackadaisical uh it was behind the scenes not just for the Leafs but for the Raptors too. Um, oh, really? it, it, well, in the culture, right? in Richard Petty's book, he talks about how like Vince Carter's mom still wanted her free tickets to the game when Vince Carter was no longer in Toronto. <laughs> like that's the kind of, what? yes, that's the kind of, uh, C-suite culture that existed 
at MLSE before uh, before about 10 years ago, before LightWiki showed up. And I think um, Anthony Petrelli said something interesting on Twitter here. He said, I don't think Kyle Dubas did a bad job by any means, but through five years, they never really broke through. And it's fair to wonder if, one, he was willing to make the tough decisions, a.k.a. move his guys, fire his friend, etc. And two, if a fresh set of eyes is needed to get it to the next level. And the key thing here for you as a fan is who's the next guy. And, and there are good candidates out there. I'm, I'm blown away that Stan Bowman's been talking to people, uh, but they but he has, and he's going to meet with the league, apparently, along with Joel Quinville, I'm once the season's done. I'm tremendously nervous that Bettman is having those meetings today. No, no, it's supposed to be when the season's done. He's not having those meetings today. Yeah. Oh, I thought the Quinville one. Before he can accept the job, it, the season has to be over. That's what Bettman said. I won't meet with him until the season over. Oh. That was the Darren Dreger report. Okay, good. So, um... So beyond that, we know that like Pete Shirelli, people like Pete Shirelli are being interviewed. But then you've got Eric Tolsky. And I, I, if I'm a Leaf fan, look this guy up. Look this guy up. This guy's the next guy to me. That I would get excited about. And maybe, he's... maybe it is time, whatever Kyle's reasons were, whatever the board's reasons were, maybe it is time to look at this and you could look at it with a glass half empty because, you know, we're all Leaf fans and we're all hysterically anxious about everything and I get it. As my therapist likes to tell me, he's like, you know, your brain instantly goes to, what if the worst happens? And he said, what's interesting about you, he's like, is you never go, oh, that's what, why we're friends. what if the best happened? Mm -hmm. What if something great happens out of this? And there are great candidates out there. I think it's wrong to assume that because Kyle Dubas is out, they're going to go get some calculator ignoring numbers ignoring knuckle dragger. Mm -hmm. I I really don't think that's a good path forward. Um, I think if your team is bottom of the standings real bad, um, yeah, you're going to want like a complete reset like that. But going from someone like Dubas to Tulski, I think is actually a very good transition. Like, does this team need to be completely blown up or does it need one major change and... Well, here's here's what the lineup weeks. looks like next year, according to James Myrtle, without RFAs. Uh, without RFAs. Without RFA. Well, if you, I'll, I'll give you with RFAs. So it I'm, should be with. So, sorry, with RFAs. Yeah. Okay. RFAs, so, you should always assume are coming back. So empty on the left wing at the top line. Then you got Matthews Marner. Tavares, in this piece, uh, Myrtle says it's time to move Tavares to the wing. I think if you saw him play Florida, you can see why. Um, no right. C two, no center, no second line center. And William Nylander. And then you got Matt Nyes on the third line. No third line center, Cali Yarncroke. And then potentially Nick Robertson. Potentially Nolachari Nola retained at $1.5 million. And then Sam Lafferty, who is actually signed. Nolachari is a UFA. Um, and then assuming that Luke Shen gets signed for somewhere close to a million dollars, you got Riley Shen, McKay Brody, Giordano, Timothy Lilligren, and, and this is Connor Timmons as well, who's also signed. Yeah. And then he says, uh, Myrtle says that they think that Samsonov's number, who, who is an RFA, will be somewhere, somewhere in, in, in the $3 million range. Yeah, that's and then what I figured. Wool has a crazy contract. He signed for two more years at $766,000 a year. It's absolutely fantastic. We're, we're jumping ahead a lot. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, mean, <laughs> I, no, I, I, I want well, to give context to what the GM's moving into, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I feel like we're, we're jumping ahead to the next GM and that stuff. But I'd like to know, like, what do you guys think about the era? Because Kyle Dupas' era as general manager has come to an end. Like, I yeah. think, what are you guys looking back on this time that he was in charge of the Toronto Maple Leafs? Success? Failure? Obviously, he didn't win the Stanley Cup, but how are you guys going to, what are the big moments? And what do you think he takes away from this? <sighs> Doomed to fail, in a way. You think um, so? Well, no, 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 no. Okay. And the Leafs, I think, gave him all the resources to succeed. Yeah. And he, in turn, gave the Leafs all the resources they needed to succeed. Um, sports science, analytics uh, department, which I don't believe they previously had, everything, right? But, uh, you know, I, I've said this, and you can call him unlucky. You can, you can say that's not an excuse. But at the end of the day, he hitched his wagon to four guys and the idea that the cap was going to go up. That's he hits his wagon to that. The world ended a once in a generation, not even a once in a century pandemic happened and the cap froze. The world froze and it ruined the plan. He stuck to it. 
And we talked about how this team, you know, maybe isn't process, uh, process oriented. He stuck to the process and we know now that was the wrong move. Um, how wrong was it? I don't know. Like they gave us a number of highly entertaining, highly successful regular seasons. The most successful regular season stretch in Toronto Maple Leafs history. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're talking about a guy who failed to achieve his goal, but mm -hmm. wasn't a failure. Um, like he did some really good things. I mean, the Florida Panthers won the president's trophy by leaps and bounds last year. And I don't think we're thrilled to barely sneak into the playoffs this year. Like you can't tell me the way they got in by the skin of their teeth was by design. It just happened that way. They also have a team that's clearly built for it right? Uh, clearly built for the playoffs and made the necessary adjustments. So he, he hitched his wagon to these four guys in the cap going up. It didn't, he didn't adjust off of that core and instead opted to lose guys like Hyman, Mikheyev. They're going to lose bunting. Go back further. <laughs> I, I mean, Barabanov. Go back further. Uh, go back further. Gardner. Van Gardner, Riemsdyk, Van Riems Bozak, guys that he should have traded. Yeah. And he should have been more. Vi uh, the one thing I'll say with Dubas is he loves his guys. We know that. Mm -hmm. Loves his guys. I would have liked earlier on for this for in his tenure for him to be more vicious. If I was if I'm looking back on this, if you had moved, I know that they thought they had a legitimate run at the cup, but looking back, no, they didn't. <laughs> and they were going to make the playoffs anyway. You could have got young players in. There were people that wanted JVR. There were people that wanted Bozak. And you would have been like, Adam, that's crazy. No one's ever done that. Yeah, they have. You got to look at it at the time. I I, feel I know like a lot of people wanted it. You got to build for the next five years. I know. I know. This is 2018 we're talking about. I think Dubas, you know, G assistant GMs do a ton of the work. Mm -hmm. And I think the perfect situation for all his faults probably would have been to have kept Lou around for another year or two. And a lot of people are not going to want to hear that. But you give Dubas a couple more years to learn. Dubas would have gone to Colorado. We know that. So that's the thing. Yeah, that was the thing. Co they had Colorado not, or Arizona. Had they not moved on, yeah. he was gone. He needed, yes. he we needed know a that. promotion else he would have left for somewhere else. For me, like I look at this and it feels like right now it could have been the opportunity for Dubas to truly grow into the role that he should be in to build this team if he was willing to make the big changes. Now seemed like the turning point for it seemed like he got to the the curve and he's about to climb the top of the mountain if he's willing to make the big changes to the roster that we all see are now necessary because we had a five year process and we got to the end of that and now we kind of know what needs to be done and what need, pieces need to be moved out and he's not going to get that opportunity and the team was willing to give him the opportunity they made him an offer but they keep saying that they that. They, they, the Leafs just put out their official yeah. press release, and it says, again, the club has decided to part ways with Kyle Dubas. Guys, it sounds like they I got a question. It. I'm wondering, and I was talking to somebody in the industry a couple days ago, and, it, and CJ even said it on this show last episode. He was like, yo, guys, like, I don't know if he can come back from what he said at the press conference. Yeah. That deal was done. It changed. Yeah. We it know changed the deal everything. was done. It he just hadn't everything. signed it. He shouldn't. I shouldn't say he shouldn't have done that publicly, but like doing that publicly cost him a lot. I mean, this team's biggest failure or Achilles heel has been their ability to perform under pressure. And I think in that moment, the pressure got to him. Mm -hmm. And maybe the team saw that and said, the problem goes higher up than we thought. Mm-hmm. And like we, we've been talking about the rosters, uh, CJ uh, on last show said, if a new guy comes in, the chances of Sheldon Keefe coming back are around somewhere like five. Now you, you, you hold on to him because that's that's the first thing you do once they don't they don't yeah. win right away. You know, <laughs> Sheldon Keefe is primed for a January firing. Oh, like, I don't. I don't think they're. Well, I, then I think they've learned gone. nothing. <laughs> no, no, he's gone. He's no, gone. but that's that's the NHL no, for they, you. No, the new guy's gonna want. No, uh, you, this, you, this isn't even about. He's under contract. You let him sit for like three months, and then you fire him. You bring in your guy. This that's how it goes every time, you guys. This isn't even about like fire Keith because he's bad. Yeah. It's fire Keith because 
the dude got off to such a poor start in Toronto in part because uh, it took him forever to get a training camp. One, because he came in mid-season. Mm -hmm. Two, again, I have to reiterate, the world stopped. Yeah. <laughs> the world stopped. And for this guy to have his first proper training camp took something like two or three years. Mm -hmm. I uh, do. We, do we want to read the full Brendan statement? Because we haven't done that yet. Yeah, yeah. He talked about the culture. Do you want me to do it? My phone's going yeah. absolutely mad. Okay, so uh, let me just pull it up here. So, uh, um, do you want me to? Brendan Shanahan, president and alternate governor of the Toronto Maple Leafs, announced today that the club has decided to part ways with general manager Kyle Dubas. And I, people are ripping me on Twitter at the moment because I think that that line matters, and people are like you're reading too much into it. I'm like. Steve, you've dealt with Leafs PR. Are you How, tweeting during the stop show? Stop tweeting during How the show. They? How are they? How are Leafs PR? <laughs> uh, tight. They're, they're what? Tight. Protective. Tight. Protective. Intentional. Yeah, deliberate. Right. So would they say that the club decided to part ways with the general manager if the club had not decided to part ways with the general manager? No, that's very deliberate. Thank you. Dubas' contract is set to expire June 30th. He will not return as Toronto's general, next general manager. I would like to thank Kyle for his unwavering dedication over these last nine seasons with the organization, including his last five as general manager. Kyle fostered a great culture within our dressing room and staff and consistently pushed to make our team better season over season. We wish Kyle and his family the best moving forward, and we thank him for his valuable contributions. That's it? That's it. That's all we got so far. There, we're, we're, gonna get a Dub we're getting a Shanahan press conference at 3 o'clock. Get ready, man. We are? Yeah, Shani, oh. Shani's going to speak to the media. Oh, and cool. you know what I love about this is that you're going to have to do a video immediately afterwards. Yep. Enjoy your Friday, sir. Nope. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I got lots of pictures of Leo, so. <laughs> nope. It'll be nice to see him sometime. No, I'm joking. Oh, yeah. I get to, I'm very fortunate that I get to shoot videos at my house. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's kind of fun. Yeah. Like, no, I'm joking. These are so, the best moments. I don't know why we're boohoo. Yeah, no, these no, are great. I'm, I'm, <laughs> shit. I'm just I'm giving him shit. Okay. Uh, Leo I, loves to play in the blue room. I think here's here's what I want to say about the Kyle Dubas legacy. Mm -hmm. Nine seasons he's been with it. He was a part of the Phil Kessel trade away from Toronto. Mm -hmm. That um that draft in Philly that I always bring up. He was hired, I want to say right after it, because I remember reading the news once I landed because my phone wasn't on because I was on a plane. Yeah. He he brought in Kasperi Kappen and then Scott Harrington, which the Leafs, for some reason, didn't like. And Scott Harrington went on to have a pretty solid career and the Leafs probably could have used him. Uh, but uh, he got hurt. What I like about Kyle Dubas and, and what I liked about his legacy is the Leafs were always the rich guy who had had everything going for him, but fucked it up. The Leafs were the big team in the big market with the big money who couldn't get their fucking shit together. That's what the Leafs were for 20 years. And, you know, you had a little blip in the early 90s where it was like, okay, the passion that unites us all, Gilmore, Wendell Clark, and then eventually Matt Sundin and Kirk Muller and Mike Gardner and Felix Potvin and, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. And then in the late 90s, after being shite for a couple of years again, trading the heart and soul in Doug Gilmore, uh, which broke my little 10-year-old heart, um, then you have, you know, Sundin era really takes hold. He becomes captain. And then they bring in Curtis Joseph. And then they, you know, then Steve Thomas. And then... Uh, uh, bringing in, uniting Steve Thomas and Darcy Tucker, who hated each other. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shane Corson. Uh, like, the the list of that. Gary Roberts. Yuskevich. Alex uh, McGillney. Danny Markov. All those yep. guys. Uh, Ed Belfair for towards the end of it. Pat Quinn era. Um, Alan McCauley. And then, of course, the, the lockout hits. And... From that point on, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs were a disaster. They were... They were not ready on any level. They were primed to contend in the 0405 season in the second year of Brian Leach yeah. as a Leaf. And there was no 0405 season. And then Brian Leach went to the Bruins. Boston. <laughs> because, of course. <laughs> and this is where... And Newendike and Roberts went to Florida. Figure that one out. Oh, yeah, I forgot. And they regretted it, uh, according to Ken Dryden's book. <laughs> so... I I want to know, and I want to understand this a couple days from now, but I do want to say, Shani taking over, like Wiki before him, Kyle Dubas is a part of this management group. This has given us the best decade of Leafs hockey we've ever seen. 
in in, in our lifetimes. Like yeah. really, even in the 70s, it was not like this. The 80s were garbage. The 60s, I mean, if you can remember, if you're that old, man, I was born in 88. Dude, it's... It's the it's best so decade they've had since the 60s. Okay, Adam is right for everyone going, what the fuck? You're right, but it's also unique. Like you look at um, teams that really struggled to get over the hump. Mm -hmm. uh, the Blues for a very long time. The Capitals for a very long time. The Sharks who still have not won the cup. Uh, all those teams that had unreal regular seasons and couldn't get over the hump were nothing like this Leafs team, they would set franchise record after franchise record, individual players, uh, streaks, goal totals, wins, points, and lose in the first round every year. So you're right mm -hmm. that it's one of their best eras in decades, and no one is going to look at it that way. Mm -hmm. They're going to understand what you mean. And they're going to be like, yep, but my heart does not feel it. But you don't remember. You don't remember then what it was like when we were coming up in our formative years, when Steve would be at the zoo doing your zoo tours. Hell yeah. And what jerseys were kids wearing back then? Uh, they weren't. Um, no, no. They were wearing hockey jerseys. But which team? They were. Well, so the, I always went by what the kids were wearing and they were wearing Getzlaff stuff. They were wearing Tave stuff, Crosby stuff, Ovechkin stuff. Um, trying to think of some of the other stars from that time. They were not wearing Leaf stuff. And if they were, they had a beat up Jonas Gustafson jersey. Jesse. Or like a like a uh, I have a Gustafson jersey. And it's beat oh, up. Yeah. Yeah. Um a beat up. That wasn't even shot at Jesse. Uh that was uh, uh uh Phil Kessel was the new one flying off the shelves. And then the FNUF one. The FNUF one sold like hotcakes. Yeah. A lot of people had FNUF jerseys. Rotten hotcakes. <laughs> just, just, just weak old hotcakes. Mm -hmm. Just, and listen, so we came out of a terrible era and were rewarded with the, like, what do you even call it? The Tantalus and Sisyphus era mm -hmm. where you just... Here's the best team you've ever seen, boys and girls. Yep. Here they are losing in the first round again, boys and girls. And their, their cruelest act as an era was to finally win a round and turn into a complete, absolute pumpkin. Their cruelest it, they and final the, act. They saved the, 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 the worst for last on that one. Yep. Their cruelest and final act as a team's era was to show us what they could be and immediately take it away. I if, thought, if they just show up versus Florida, like we're probably not sitting here saying this. They, the, if they lose in six in a relatively normal way. Yep. <laughs> if they don't go down 3-0. They don't lose normally, this team. Or they didn't. Yeah. Now, I, I wanted, I did want to throw this out. There's, a, there's one piece of breaking news, but the first thing is, you know that meme from the Avengers? It's like, did you do it? Yes, but what it costs? At, but, <laughs> at, at what cost? And then, and then everything. And it's John Tavares scoring the OT winner against Tampa. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's so true. Now Kyle Cushman is reporting. Kyle Cushman, who is one of our favorite up and coming uh, reporters Someone for the score. Grab him. Uh, Greg Moore, AJ McLean, and John job. Snowden will not be back as the Toronto Marlies coaches in twenty three twenty four. That has also just been announced. So I know there's a lot of Marlies fans who will really enjoy that. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I don't. But don't you think that that's interesting? Because who, um, who are the three names? Sorry, I know uh, Greg, uh, Greg, uh, Greg Moore, um, uh, AJ McLean of the Backstreet Boys, and John Snowden. Actually, John Snowden. John Snowden. Yeah, he, he knows nothing. You have to fire him. Well, exactly. Well, wow. so so I wondered. That's so, a Game of Thrones reference. Uh, yeah, you've never seen it. Poor CHL on Twitter said, there's a lot of terrible things. I'm paraphrasing his tweet because it was a lot funnier than what I'm going to give you right now. But there's a lot of terrible things that could happen. Or the Leafs could just promote Brandon Pridham. But let's focus on the terrible. <laughs> and I wonder, well, I wonder if that's just what's going on here. I, uh, because, unless they already have a candidate. Well, because like a guy who they're going to hire today or Tuesday. Uh, Pridham has to he has to like you've been setting plans in motion for months and he is interestingly not come up as somebody who's been granted permission meaning that 
Like, you know, other they teams must be paying them a fortune. That's what I'm saying. But I yeah. think other teams would would call the Leafs and ask for permission. And the Leafs are famous for, hey, we're not going to stand in your way. They're not pulling the true living thing in Calgary where they're like, no, you decided to walk away. So you can't have a job somewhere else. Uh, they're, they're not letting true living talk to anybody. I'm wondering if that is the fuck the flames. For yeah, that, they're by the way. Oh, for for doing that to Brad. Trilliving, that's such a shit. Like after a decade of work, regardless of dick. what you think of the job, dick the move. guy did. Uh, you're preventing him from getting a job in a summer where so many uh, jobs have freed up. You guys suck. And I wish more hockey guys who always rip that sort of behavior would rip it for what it is. Garbage. Uh, Kyle or, or Scott Wheeler said in Kyle Dubas's five season as Leafs jam, they averaged 106 points <gasps> before he took over their, their points record in a season was 105. And he was the AGM of that 105 point team. Uh, unprecedented run of regular season success that des- deserves a ton of credit, even if he doesn't fit, even if he didn't finish the job. And I agree with that. That's torture. But I think that's torture. When, when Leaf fans look back on this era, I think you're going to look back on it as great and torture. Yeah, there was no results. Like at the end of the day, we never got the conference finals run. We never got the big run to the Stanley Cup. We never got a championship. None of that. There were absolutely no results during the Dubas era. And I forget how young he was when he took over as assistant general manager. He still in his 20s. He began in that position in 2014 in July, and he was 28 years old at that time. And now he's no longer working in the organization. He's only 37. Th- three years removed from being named the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds GM at 25. And people in OHL circles were criticizing that hiring for him being too young for that. Yeah. I'm and, re- I, and I and I look at the Leafs organization now and I know that Shanahan's not going to make that same mistake with somebody who's relatively inexperienced. You know, I assume they'll go with somebody with a lot of experience. And that g- person might be Brandon Pridham because he's been in the organization for a lot longer than uh, Dubas. Yeah. He's been in the game of hockey just because he's uh, Pridham? Like, Pridham. Yeah, he's I don't think so. He's been in the game of hockey longer oh, in, than in the game. In, Sorry, it, you said in the organization. Oh, in, in the organization or in the game of hockey longer than Dubas just because he's older. Like he's, I think he's like 50 now or whatever. Um, and I think that's that's a good candidate, but I don't think they're going to make the same if it's a mistake. You know, I don't think they'll make the same mistake again in that they'll hire somebody who's a tad in experience in doing the, for this for the first time, because there are some serious questions here they got to solve with the roster. And the first one being you got to have a good relationship with Austin Matthews and get him resigned before uh, July 1st. I have a question. Mm. If you have you just trained somebody else's great general manager? Kyle? Yeah. Have you just trained Kyle by trial by fire to go and be fantastic? Somewhere well, else? the Kyle Dubas revenge tour is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Feels like that, doesn't it? Absolutely mm-hmm. ridiculous. We're going to come back to your point there, Jesse. No, and, but, uh, and by the way, no one is going to hold it against him if he breaks his word and GM somewhere else next season. Yeah, I think that's no that's important because I think that when I was when I was saying earlier that this feels like the end of a Kyle Dubas era, and if he stuck around, it would have been the next evolution because it seemed like at this point he's finally learned. He's finally learned what the process does and what it doesn't do. Yeah, and you had to turn the corner and be willing to make big changes. So. Either if he takes the year off or whatever, but if he goes to another team, he's going to take all of those things that he would he learned here and he would the changes he would have made and put them to this new team. And I, I, that's why I was like, I wanted to see what he would do in the new Cal Dubas era where yeah. he's making big sweeping changes. We're and talking perhaps about, doesn't have as much bureaucracy above him to get yeah. done, right? We're I talking like about that. all the things that he did well and did poorly, and we're trying to weigh the pros and cons. I don't think he was let go for those things. No. Um, I think he was let go because of a press conference, and that's absolutely wild. And we still don't. We don't. We really, don't know that. Then we'll we probably, know that as of this. Uh, I mean, yeah. but yeah, it does seem that way. I'm, I'm with you, but I just want to. I want to throw it out there. Shani could come on and say something explosive at three o'clock, and we don't know. So I do want to put that, you know, what are those called? Asterisks? It is 1243. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fisher, by the way, is, is he having a fun time? Yeah, he's, he's, he called and I just texted back. We know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I tweeted one thing. I just said we're recording. Um, uh, also lost in all this. And this happened yesterday. R- the Rangers did get permission to speak with uh, one of the Leafs coaches. Um, oh, yeah, so good news. Uh, Spencer Carberry, uh, 
mm-hmm. um, was given permission. Uh, he is apparently speaking with Anaheim, New York, and Washington. Yeah, he was always going to be a guy who, uh, I mean, one of the teams I would like him to speak to is Toronto. Well, I, uh, I wonder now if, if if they've made this call on Dubas, do they have the succession plan ready to go and keeps out too? Uh, it's, it's possible. So Carberry won, I believe it was coach of the year with the Hershey bears and he was with the Leafs for what, two years. Mm -hmm. And it was an interesting dynamic behind the bench because I think a lot of people thought because he was taking over the power play from Manny Malhotra, if I'm not mistaken, Mm -hmm. um, this means Manny's gone. Well, Manny was, Manny's still there. Yeah. Um, they got a ton of guys, uh, behind the bench to help Keefe out, um, it's no surprise that he's talking to Washington on account of that was their farm team that he won coach of the year with. And guys who win those awards tend to get a promotion at some point. Um, and I'm surprised I'm surprised he lasted two years. Okay, I want to ask you guys a question, just a hypothetical. Not really hypothetical, more like a dream board, okay? And Jesse, I, I want to start with you on this one. Mm-hmm. Next year... What type of general manager and coach do you want to see for the Toronto Maple Leafs? What's the general manager's priority? What do you, and, and I'm, I'm going to ask you both the same question. So I'll, I'll, what kind of GM, what's the mold, I guess? Is it in the same mold as Dubas, but different? Is it somebody completely different who values different things? How do you, how do you think that the Leafs ideally take the next step forward here? What type of person? I don't know what Eric Tulski looks like. I can Google him. <laughs> I, 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 you guys just keep throwing out that. Eh? Man. No, 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 no. But, but I'm, I'm using that. I know what there's his moves a reason, look like. There's a, there's a reason. Uh, He's got very I'm, nice, nice curly hair. There's a reason I'm using that. Um, I don't think I've ever heard his voice. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen his face. I don't know anything he's ever said. I know his work. Brandon Shanahan has been here since 2013, I think. <laughs> So, you know, we're heading into a really tumultuous era. They're going to trade probably one of the faces of the franchise. They're going to make a lot of moves. And you can't just make those moves and not communicate with your fans. Right? So Mm -hmm. you can't just make those moves and keep a guy behind the scenes. It's time for Brendan Shanahan to step up and be the face of these things, I think. Masai-like? Yes. And if you're going to hire a guy... Um, whether it's Tulski or someone else, um, you need to let them go do their thing. And they're new and innocent. You're the dartboard now. This is your final move. This is all you have left. There's If this doesn't work, there's the, no reason to keep you. You're the patsy. You're the... Thing. You're the Hi. very, very deserving Patsy. You've been here for a decade. Your guy just got shit canned. Your guy who you picked over Lou Lamorello, and I'm not trying to say that was the wrong move. I'm just trying to say that was quite the swing you took, Brendan. Yeah. Right? Yep. It To the praise of the show, I'm sure. But that was the move you made. You have to wear everything. I just feel like Dubas took on so much Mm -hmm. and maybe that was his own doing. Maybe that was the team. I don't know. You can't put the general manager through that. Um, I don't want the Brian Burke sound bites. Um, Well, I mean, they're, they're highly entertaining uh, as a fan and working in the media and everything. But I think this needs to be a guy we barely see. Do you guys remember what we or woman? What do we used to say about woman Lou Lamorello? We barely see. And Jesse, I want to get to your answer as well. What do we used to say about Lou Lamorello press conferences? Uh oh, the master of using a thousand words to say nothing. Bingo. That would be nice. Jesse, what do you want to say? What do you think? I want to see Brendan Printer as the next general manager. I think it's it starts and ends with him. I think it's his job to lose. This is somebody who was the director of uh the central registry. Uh that's where he like came up. He he came Didn't he up work on the CBA too? Or yeah. was that yeah. Lawrence Gilman? Yeah, no. It was uh it was Pridham. Pridham Pridham did some work on the uh CBA as well. Like he he knows every GM in this league. 
he's he's been Kyle's right hand man in building the roster. And sometimes when you take the guy who's right next to the guy, he's able to see the flaws that the main guy has. And if Pridham can be the guy who's making the edits on all the work that Kyle has done, I think he's the perfect guy for the job. What do you got? What do you what are you trying to do? Nothing. Don't worry about it. No, the, okay. the lots of news is I wonder up. I wonder, Jesse. So when you when you're making a change like this though, with Pridham, the the instant criticism from the people that hated Dubas is gonna be this is Dubas part two. He's he's in an echo chamber. That's he's it. He's gonna look at this team. Uh, do you think that there's not gonna be ignorant writ articles written tomorrow? What well, yeah, so why worry about it? Okay, but I think that you can you can ask the question. Let's say you're MLSE board. Mm -hmm. What's going to be different? I think that's a relevant question. I think you yeah, look. You absolutely. we we've outlined that this has been the most successful regular season um, point in the history of the Toronto Maple Leafs franchise. And all you need to do is duplicate that because you want to keep that going, and then create postseason success out of that. And I feel like if Brandon Pridham can edit the work of Kyle Dubas in that the way that I thought Kyle was going to do to his own work if he stuck around. I feel like Pridham could be to get that job done. There isn't, I don't feel like there's gonna there's gotta be parts of the roster that have wholesale changes, right? We need to trade of some of the big core four. The head coach, who knows about Keith if he's coming back. He might be just the guy who has to fall on his sword. Who knows? But there isn't the sake that we're we need to go through a rebuild in Toronto. Mm -hmm. We're not at that point. It's it's more of a retool where you need to find a formula that works in the postseason where you don't have a showing like you did versus, versus Florida. Jesse, you need to have some sort of postseason success in those five years. And if it just takes tweaks, I think the guy next to the guy who's very smart and can do those tweaks is the right guy for the job. I'm just curious about um, whether or not we should trust Jesse's opinion based on the fact that he has won zero cups in a nutshell. <laughs> zero cups. Maybe you'll step in. Do you think you'll step in? Do you think they'll call you? For the role of general manager yeah. astronomy, please. You think Shandy's going to give you a show? I'll later? take an interview. You'll take, it, yeah, you'll take no, the interview. If, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, no, I got to check my phone to see. I think I got a voicemail, so I got to see if it was uh, Shanny, but uh, I'll take the interview. We'll see if I'll accept it if they offer, but we'll see. You, you I like the show. Says, Pick up from. <laughs> Bay? <laughs> I like the show a use lot, that? so I don't know if I can uh if I want to leave it for that job, but we'll see. Just a heads up that Peter Shirelli's name is now trending in Canada <laughs> uh, because a bunch of teams, especially Oilers fans, are like, oh, Toronto. <laughs> There's a lot of Peter Shirelli memes. I, I'd go around. running uh, across the continent like fucking Forrest Gump. He's not the guy. <laughs> no, they're not going to hire him. I just started running. <laughs> and, it, and the movie ends with me running into a completely inexplicable cup parade <laughs> the Leafs could have according to James Myrtle from that article I quoted depending upon what they do with Muzzin and Murray and and you know LTIR space and all the other things read James's article if you want to know why but 20 to 30 million dollars in cap space this offseason depending upon what goes on and that's before you make trades the free agency crop is thin uh, highlighted by the fact that Frank Saravalli tied in an article that Michael Bunting would be the top of the free agency class. Uh, we know Ryan O'Reilly's not going to be back. Uh, Noel Achari may be back. Uh, he's open to it. Uh, but we know Ryan O'Reilly is probably not. And uh, we know that Michael Bunting is going to get a, a fortune on the market. Yeah, like, I, I think... So what do you do? You're going to have to make some trades. So I, I, I want people to think about this when it comes to Pridham, assuming Pridham is the one who gets promoted um or at very least is the interim yeah gm mm -hmm. uh for all these incredibly important decisions um i think pridham was a tool in dubis's vision and i think a lot of it came down to what can we do mm. what i need this player can you make this work can you figure out this cap situation because of this and that and that and shifting things around? And I think you're ignorant to the point of disrespect if you don't think there were at least a few times that Brandon Pridham went, we can do that, but we friggin' shouldn't. Yeah. Because this could happen, that could happen, that could happen. Like, well, signing Matthew Nyes and then not being able to play a goaltender. Exactly that sort of situation. I think it's ignorant to assume that no one in the Leafs front office was like, you know what? 
<laughs> we're not gonna we wouldn't we're not gonna have a backup goalie and that's kind of bad <laughs> like uh, i i think it's ignorant to assume that conversation was never happened it's like cj said there's a lot of fuck you matches you know this isn't your office that you work at or whatever you No, it's office. not a typical corporation mm -hmm. no like these guys uh you know they're professionals that operate in a rather unprofessional manner like they yeah. they, 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 they they treat it like the on ice product you know they treat the the management stuff as in like i can fucking yell at you and tomorrow we got to go out of battle again it was you know? uh, yeah. <laughs> from the amazon documentary steve briere offering a perfectly legitimate criticism or piece of feedback to Sheldon Keefe. And Keefe's response was, fuck off at the top of fuck it's off. Not make a save. Fuck when you me. work in sports, it's not a normal work no, environment. No, it's not. <laughs> no, so I, I think it's ignorant to the point of disrespect. You think Brandon Pridham is going to come in and be mini Dukes. I have I have uh, the next general manager of the Toronto Maple Who is it, Jesse? I think I know who, who it's going to be. Any of you guys' thoughts on this name? Mark Hunter. No, oh, fuck off. No, <laughs> Jesus. no way. Why no not? Way. There's a reason he's not already in the league, man. Nobody cares. Nobody wanted him the first time. You got to redo. wasn't even a consideration when he was an AGM with the Leafs. He was not a consideration. His draft record sucks. Fuck off. You got to redo. No. Because they went with Dubis over Hunter no. last time. No. And this time they get to no. go with Hunter. No. And Hunter I, laughed uh, because he was like, no, I don't want to be. I... I am oh, I'm tiptoeing around this. He, when he, <laughs> what are you, trying, what are you when, trying to not say? When he didn't get the job, uh, I am told from reliable sources he was extraordinarily bitter about it to the point of being anti-Leafs and cheering against their success. I don't want a guy who cheered against the Leafs' success to head up this team. Well, you'd be hard-pressed uh, because most people cheer against the Leafs. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, who was more bitter? Mark Hunter not getting the job or Steve getting turned down by the London Knights. Uh, Ooh. Ooh, that's a good one. I was oh. Hmm. Oh, that's a should we leave that to the compliment section? I'm I gonna, want them to vote. I want to vote. I'm gonna say him because oh. I I never <laughs> went to my friends in the media and seeded little, yeah, and also you know they're they freaking suck because of this and i should you, got this well, job because every steve no but you did something very similar oh, in, i know in turning down nazim god i know no, I'm, I'm glad we got to talk about every that because like that, listen don't do as 21 year old steve did which i wouldn't i would not take advice from that guy no yeah no I'd be like, you that understand was a why you can't, why I yeah. can't take advice from you. Every six months, Steve Simmons writes an article about his buddy Mark Hunter. Let's just be honest about it, and it's about how he would be better, and and that's what Steve's talking about. Where it's like you're kind of dropping those morsels in there. If Mark and, Hunter's the next GM of the Leafs, what the what was the point of the last half decade? Exactly. Fire Shanahan. Yeah, it's if, not gonna. If, be. But, like, we're not, but, Lee, but Jesse was just trolling us, and we're taking this argument seriously. <laughs> it's gonna be floated out there. I have oh, a question. Uh, no, like, you don't think uh, when we're done recording, you're going to go on Twitter, you're going to see Mark Hunter, a name for no, right. fucking GM. You're right. I have a question, guys. Guys. Uh, guys. Is there an opportunity here for this next GM, whoever it is, to take this team in a direction, and hear me out, that's younger? And I, I want to bring up a team that had trouble breaking through a lot. Um, and didn't break through until their best player in their franchise history was in his 30s, and that is Alexander Ovechkin. People say, you want to blow up the Leafs' core? Look at Backstrom and Ovechkin. And I did look back at Backstrom and Ovechkin. I'm like, they have played together a while, but you know who else has been there the whole time? Fucking nobody. Yeah. What they kept doing I, was I'm they so kept cycling people in who were younger. There was Semin, there was Ribeiro, there was... Mike Green! Yeah. End of argument. Mike Green was awesome. They had he was a, awesome. A franchise power play quarterback who scored 30 goals as a defenseman in one season. Fucking argument over. Yes. How many starting goalies did they have? A million. They had like Holtby and then went to another guy and then got Holtby. Look, look, look. <laughs> Ovechkin, Backstrom, Semin, Green in the 2009 series er, season. Their fifth leading scorer was Brooks Like, followed by oh. Mike Knubel. Uh, wow. You know, like, let's go to the next season. Who's on that team? Well, we've got Ovechkin, Backstrom, Semin, Like, Knubel, John Carlson, Marcus Johansson. The kid. Yeah, isn't that crazy? And then look at this. 
They had Ovechkin, Salmon, Marcus Johansson. I think Backstrom was injured for a good chunk of that year. He missed half the year. Dennis Weidman was a high-scoring defenseman that year, 46 points. Um, and then, wow. And, and then, of course, let's keep going. Ovechkin, Ribeiro, Backstrom, Troy Brower, Mike Green, John Carlson again. So they... The the caps what the caps did was they cycled through a bunch of shit until they figured it out. Hopey was so good. Fucking get rid of Mike Ribeiro. Oh yeah, no Hopey from uh, twenty twelve thirteen where he became the starting goaltender for the Washington Caps. Well, he played thirty six games, so I guess thirteen fourteen where he played forty eight games. He's the one A one B there. He had a nine fifteen in the regular season and from there it's 915 923 922 925 907 wow. 911 that's his 2013 peak, through 2019 crazy. his peak was nuts oh uh, gosh and, and like he wasn't even that great in the 1718 season and in the playoffs he went off like he's the only reason they beat the lightning he had he had shutouts in game 6 and 7 damn against they, that lightning team that's not like they, the dynasty should have began long before it did. <laughs> yeah. But you understand, and it didn't because of Braden Holby. You understand what I'm saying here, though, is that if you're going to use the Washington Capitals, and I think they are a good example of a great regular season team that couldn't get it done. Um, you can hang on to a couple of star players, but you're going to have to cycle in and get younger. And I look in at the St. Louis Blues right now. Keep your eyes on the St. Louis Blues. What Doug Armstrong is doing there. They were in. People forget this. They traded uh, Ryan O'Reilly, Barbashev. Noel Achari, probably some other players as well. And who do they who do they go after immediately? Timo Meyer. Mm -hmm. They were in on that, and and I think that that they're going to do a quick turnaround. I wonder if the Leafs take one of the core four and trade them for another team's um, younger players that haven't quite broken out yet. Do you know what I mean? A couple of younger. The I wonder if that's odds, one of the directions they look at. The sheer odds of them having a better regular season are. I think there's a step back coming. A hundred percent. I think, you know, you talked about them going younger. I thought I, I'm pretty sure that was going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. So much Hard of the roster is unsigned. Yeah. Like, a lot yeah. of it's unsigned. Uh, the Marley's got a decent little crop. Like Holmberg, I think is going to be a full-time NHLer. Nice is going to be a full-time NHLer. Robertson's coming back. Nick Robertson's a very interesting uh, question. Um, the likes of Bobby McMahon, who's not the youngest, but still uh, Alex Steves, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm. They have some other fascinating prospects mm -hmm. that may not even be in North America next year. Um, uh, Nikolai Gabron. Oh my God, Nikolai Grubyankin just won KHL Rookie of the Year. Mm -hmm. um, they love KHL Rookie of the Year guy. They sure <laughs> do. Not like the third one on the roster. Uh, friggin', oh my God, I don't even remember the Swedish guy's name. They, they had a defenseman who was. Um, it wasn't Hirvonen. No, no, it was. Uh, he ended up going to Tampa. Oh, Hirvonen is a fucking forward. His name started with a B. Oh my God, I I can't remember. Um, he was, it was Callie Rosen and this guy, mm -hmm. Oh, he was rookie of the year in Sweden. And you look at the list of guys who have won that award, like you're very likely to hit, but he never quite hit. Um, they, I think they were going to go younger anyway. I mean, look at uh, Joseph wool mm -hmm. having a tandem of wool Samson off or either of those guys, 26. Nope. Nope. Or either of them like. Yeah, you have it up in Wolf's front of you. 24, uh, Sammy is... 25. 26. Sure. Oh, he's 26. Yeah, there you go. So that's a pretty young tandem. Yeah. Right? Just by default, they're going to be a lot younger. And yeah, if they take a step back for regular season success so that they can have success in the playoffs, everybody's going to be happy with that. I like, am. I'm reading the replies to the Leafs PR tweet. I've never seen a, a, a general manager get fired. And most, most teams that fire a GM rejoice. People are pissed. People are really pissed. Well, you're reading Twitter. I know, but yeah, but there's hundred, there's 250 replies already. If the Toronto it's, Sun had a comment section on their newspaper, it'd be fucking. Don't they? <laughs> yeah. Well, online. This is also an extremely complicated situation because we don't exactly know the interpersonal relationships going on right now. Yeah. There's some something's happening with Kyle and his family. There's something happening with. MLSE's reaction to Kyle doing that without anybody knowing that he was going to do that. There's a whole bunch of reaction outside of like, hey, what happened in Florida is unacceptable. Well, and, unacceptable. And what did CJ say about um, the board um, and offering Dubas an extension last year? 
there was a company who's involved in ownership who was against it. And that company currently has a final four that they're televising of Vegas, Dallas, Mm -hmm. Carolina, Florida. And with respect to those fan bases, it's not a great draw up here. (laughs) Yeah. So that aspect of ownership might not be totally thrilled with how things have been. And to be fair, the other side also weren't fans of offering him that contract extension at the time because it was Tannenbaum who went to the two blue and reds to offer the say, hey, we should do this for Kyle. And both of them said no. I, th- I think the blue said yes. I the blue said no, no. Both sides, because both sides said blue and red said no. They oh, both said no. Yeah, yeah, no. you're, you're Bell and Rogers. Right. By the way, for anybody yes. that wants to know, it was Bell and Rogers. Larry Tannenbaum wanted yeah. to sign. So the, I was he, talking about the Halo cartoon. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, so we have a situation where they didn't want to give him this deal. He goes and he blows up everything in the media. Who knows what happened behind scenes with Brendan Shanahan as well? We haven't even gone to that. Like whatever their relationship is, whatever the status of that has been over the last a couple of years because that's been wishy-washy who knows what's going on so there's so many little details that goes into like hey maybe it was just time for all of us to go our separate ways with you here kyle and let's uh go away from this and that that reaction that you're seeing on twitter they don't know that and we don't know that no, sitting we don't, here. Not as all of, of the details that go into kyle leaving the organization and we're fascinated to see if we can get some reports out of some guys who are insiders and find out what actually happened and we can get some details here because there's a big mess happening behind the scenes and i'm just curious as to how it's all, all gone down from reports it was a mess this weekend at the board mm-hmm. it was a mess this past weekend at the board uh, and you know i gotta be honest like if you've worked for a, a corporation recently unless they're sort of a smaller corporation, getting corporations motivated to do anything is tricky. Um, They're slow to the point of, I can't even believe that they continue to do business sometimes. And yet they do. And I, I think that this is out of their wheelhouse in terms of what they're used to being able to deal Mm -hmm. with. You imagine you sit on the board of Maple Leaf sports. um, Most of the time you're just sort of advising on business matters and watching games and stuff. You know, you look at the the uh, ever since Tim Laiwiki's been here, it's been sort of the same guys. Masai, Brendan, um, uh, Kyle was there. Uh, they, you know, the Raptors did change GMs in there. You know, it's funny you should bring up Masai because I think that lends to exactly what you're saying about the board and how they kind of operate. Because when Masai's contract was up uh, two years ago now, the board didn't want to give him a raise. Well, Ed <laughs> Rogers didn't want to give him a raise. The board, one particular yeah. member of the board did not want to give the man who brought the championship to the Toronto Raptors, who had a, a sparkling record as president of the Raptors, who had frankly had no blemishes so far. And then at that moment, he was up for a new contract and they almost lost him for no good reason. Yep. So that's the mentality of these same individuals who are making this decision. Same same board, you know, who almost didn't re-sign Masai after coming off of winning a championship and being absolutely fantastic in his job. Now they're faced with this Kyle Dubas situation. Same people making that decision. How do you think how do you think um Sheldon Keith feels right now? <laughs> I mean, he knows, right? This is it. I writing's on the wall. Looking up. I think he's maybe looking up vacation spots. Maybe well, maybe canceling his flight to Nashville. Because I actually I ran into him in Montreal last Did you? year. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. I said hi. Oh, I, I, you didn't tell us that. Oh fuck! It's, you told it's, us it's, all about Jay Woodcroft and seeing his butt in his, Montreal. In you post. ran into him, bro, and you didn't. What, yeah, that I was. And he was like, podcast? "What are you talking? We were with you for fucking three days. We, we never brought up shows together. Sorry, I forgot." I, this is dude, the first time I'm hearing you met Sheldon Keefe in Montreal. I was with someone from Sportsnet. I think it's because I was doing Sportsnet duties. Yeah, but after we were with you for 72 hours. A lot hours. of stuff happened. I forgot. <laughs> that seems like a big thing to forget, Jesse, don't you think? Like, it's like, it's what like, happened? You know, Please. Guys, I met Santa Claus oh, I, and I, I forgot him. to tell you about it. I met him. Uh, <laughs> his, his family was there. Um, he was excited to be at the draft. <laughs> How long did you talk to him? Oh, like a couple minutes. What did you guys talk about? If you're allowed to share, uh, well, I barely remember <laughs> that it happened, so I I don't really remember. It's just I've I've only met him a couple times, and both times it was just you know cordial and did you talk nice. hockey. Did he know who you were? Not really, no. Oh, well, okay. because like both times I've met him, I didn't want to bother him because mm-hmm. one, he's with his kids at the draft. 
you don't want to bother him in that situation. And the other time I met him, he was in Whitby, I think with the Marlies. Yeah, he was still head coach of the Marlies. He was in Whitby with the Marlies running a practice mm. with kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be like, excuse me, move aside, tiny children, <laughs> living an actual dream, getting to skate with professional <laughs> hockey players. I need to speak to Kyle, du uh, to, to Sheldon Keefe for my YouTube channel. I always <laughs> think it'll be, it would be a great bit if one of those kids things would get you out there amongst the kids oh they'd skate circles around me yeah but it'd be hilarious all right guys and now we're gonna do backwards crossovers fuck hey <laughs> is there a real chance at any point that bruce boudreau is the guy to come in and be the head coach no next? i think there's a real chance i think there's you a real chance he was too. uh he's up there on my list of guys who could replace him because you what, cannot sell it because they gotta be a little what miserable you right you dude the dude who's never won a game seven is gonna come coach the leafs Listen, oh, I think he you're trying to sell it to the memes, to the meme creator. The meme idea. <laughs> it's 100% going to get brought up. I think he could come in and be a great coach. Yeah. I think I think he should. But <laughs> game seven rolls around. Oh. Oh, you're going to be shitting your pants. You're too worried. And I know you because you're a coward. You're, you're going to bet worried. against the Leafs. You're too worried about the fucking Twitter memes. Oh, yeah. People. I'm too worried about the Leafs. You're right. No, shut up. <laughs> no, shut your face. I think that's my not maybe number one or two contender on guys who could take over I, Maple Leafs tomorrow. I, and, and listen, here's the thing. His record in the regular season has been amazing. And he also is known for making people happy. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing about this Leafs team is they seem sometimes just a little bit like they're under pressure, mm -hmm. a little bit miserable. Be nice if we could just lighten the mood. They take things a little too seriously. It's a little there. serious, yeah, right? I, yeah. and, and they also, they, I mean, they like each other a lot. That's nice. But, like, I don't feel joy from this Leafs team very well, often. Do you see joy? And I get it. The market's hot. But this is Toronto. You win here, you're a god forever. They seem, like, downtrodden. And some people are going to be like, no, the last thing that the Leafs need is a happy-go-lucky coach. Uh, Sheldon was not that. I think he maybe came in and did a little bit of that shit. He was he was kind. Yeah, you can play tonight because you're in your hometown. Yeah. Isn't that fun and cute? I don't think that's generally what he was at all. And I think uh, he settled into his role of bad cop uh, pretty well. Neutered Babcock. Uh, no, sorry, neutered bad cop. Uh, because <laughs> he would criticize his top guys, which is exactly what they needed. And then he would have to walk it back because they're sad. But that, that you look, happened to way too much in the Dubas era. More than way. once. And but you look at the Florida Panthers right now. Yeah, they they play like a bunch of badasses. They play with joy. They play with glee. They're laughing. Uh, Paul Maurice is uh, fucking working on material at Yuck Yucks every time he gets behind the podium. He's having a great time. Those guys are playing loose, fun hockey. Maybe Bruce Boudreaux is exactly what the doctor ordered. Well, and I wondered if that's not maybe the reason when this team inevitably changes, because you know it's going to. You know whether it's it's this offseason or sometime next season, mm -hmm. the core four is not going to remain the core four. So uh, it, it's almost a guarantee now. Is there any chance that this team gets a little bit younger and gets a little bit of that? We don't even know. <laughs> like we don't, we're, we're, we don't, they don't feel like a little bit of new blood, a little bit of fun. What is it, Steve? Yeah, well, Jesse, we, we got to put that on the screen. No, you can't tweet that during the show. And man, I'm just going to ignore it. What? <laughs> the fucking TSN tweeted the divorce thing. And then you were like, bro, why you got to hit me like that? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny because it's French, though. <laughs> so I think it means it, no, it's RDS, not TSN. Yeah, RDS. It just oh, says oh. divorce. <laughs> <TSN's French. laughs> there it is. I, I'm going to I'm going to post that on my Instagram and be like, wow, it's 2020 again. <laughs> this guy's writing like a novel while on the air. Like, how are you able to? I'm do actually just reading. I'm reading up on people's reactions actions to things and stuff i also think um people here's i think there are people that are now concerned and, and this is i'm watching the reactions yeah, I, come in real time Adam, but they're fucking twitter people I'm, I'm watching reactions to people going god please don't hire this person to do hire that let's all just enjoy the fact that we had a good run with this guy and things can get better that's the initial point i want to get back to i want to get back to this could go really right i mean okay i don't have information um, so I'd be fascinated to know what CJ is going to say. Mm -hmm. I think the odds we go into 
the draft with a brand new general manager, as in someone who's not in the organization right now, if they promote Brandon Pridham, fine. But the odds of an outside person being the GM of the Leafs come July 1st, I'd put at 2%. Like, the, there's no time. There's no time. I think you're completely wrong. I think they've got their guy ready to go, and I think they're going to have him next week. I think it's Brandon Pridham. And so that, if we're that would fall under action dot com slash SDPN, who you putting your money on in ter- who's next GM? So oh, yeah. Dave, inside Dave. hire oh, or I'll, outside I'll hire? Yep. That's Ooh, that's, that's, I think those are the two options. You put the odds on the board. I'm a fucking odds maker. Jesse right here. Now, inside hire, outside. We got to We got to look at the flyers, though. Like if they hire Elliot Friedman, <laughs> is that an inside hire? Because it's the same company. <laughs> the the, the Flyers Adam, very literally Adam's did that. reaction when he realized that NBC just hired one of their own broadcasters to that run was their nuts, hockey man. team. It took I, like I was also really tired. It took day. you like twenty minutes there, to realize we were times, having a conversation about that. There are times in the show where I'll listen back and I'll go, oh, like I, I missed that because of like you know I'm waking up early and shit. But that one it was like, oh yeah, it's, whoa, it's whoa, whoa, hire. guys, wait, guys. it's an internal hire. Holy fuck, really? Oh, D- Dubas was just fired. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how long it's Sorry, guys. We got to redo this. I'm actually Maddie, writing sports and redoing redoing right now to get the Leafs GM uh, thing going. So um, so what What are you guys? You don't need to write that email during the show. I think, okay, you, could, I think you could wait. Fine. Fine. 10 minutes when, when fine. we wrap. Oh. Um, inside hire, outside hire? Uh, I'm going to say outside. I'm going to. I think it's Eric Tolsky because I want it to be. Uh, I love what he's done with the Canes. Canes are badass, man. They're badass. There's too many. Uh, I think it's going to be Pridham. The Prid dog? The Prid dog. I do. So if it's Pridham, why wouldn't they have him ready by the draft? No, no. See, I think you're misinterpreting what I'm saying. Oh. I think it, if they hire Brandon Pridham, uh-huh. that would count as an internal hire. Oh, mm-hmm. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, He's late to this too. Sorry, guys. There's also, <laughs> sorry. I don't know if we want to take a look at the management structure of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Let's do it. But there's, the fuck? Quite We're here. Few, there's quite a few options, I guess, they could go with oh, in yeah. terms of an interim basis. Okay. What do we got? Cliff Fletcher. Oh, no. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, fuck off? No. I mean, fuck off is Cliff, what I mean. Listen, I don't need Fletcher, another Jeff Finger. Cliff Fletcher is responsible for two of the greatest trades in Toronto Maple Leaf history. He brought Doug Gilmore to Toronto, traded a 50-goal scorer for him, and then he traded Wendell Clark, who was the heart and soul for freaking Matt Sundin. And, and everybody was upset about it for some reason. leather skates. No, it's no. It's been a while, though, is my point. Assistant general manager, Haley Wickenheiser. Oh, I, I forgot she was promoted to assistant general manager. She might get a raise. Uh, uh, well, she might get a raise. <laughs> she she might get a promotion as well. Special assistant to the general manager, Jason Spezza. No, he's not ready. No, he might be gone. He's assistant to the mm. regional manager. He's going to go where Dubas goes. Now, that sucks so much. One of us in our general manager tenure made him head coach. How'd it and go? Ended up firing him in, I think it was December. <laughs> ah, that was a fun year. Hey, you know what? You I know mean, why I actually, sucked. I don't think Spets is going to go anywhere. Uh, I think his 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 organizational ties are a lot deeper than just Kyle Dubas. I also know for a fact that he is a Torontonian, wants to be in Toronto. It's the reason he was here. He's not leaving. So I think as a part of his general manager tutelage, I think they're going to continue to train him. No matter who the GM is, he's going to be a part of it. Hope, I hope you're right. Who are the names who were let go today? Adam, you had them earlier. It was uh, John Snowden, Greg Moore, and let me just look it up here. Is Ryan Hardy still a part of the organization? Uh, I haven't he's seen him. He's the GM, him. isn't he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's, he's GM of the Marley. He's assistant general manager um, in the Leafs organization, also head of Meyer League operations, which means yeah. Marley's GM. Is a- Lawrence Gilman gone? AJ McLean from the Backstreet Boys was also like AJ McLean. That was the other name. Yeah. So yeah, Lawrence Gilman is not on this list here, Steve. Oh, interesting. I assume he's not within the organization, but there are options. There are options. The main one being Brandon Pridham, you know. Priddog. All right. Guys, I I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Now, listen, I've got other stuff. Do we want to go with that other stuff or we just want to leave it? What's the other stuff? Well, I mean, we can talk about the fact that um, 
Uh, well, we know that Gary Bettman will review Joel Quinville's status once the season is done and, and Stan Bowman's as well. Uh, we also know that after the Arizona Coyotes Tempe situation, Clayton Keller's dad <laughs> tweeted at the Coyotes that Clayton would not be coming back. Now, Craig Morgan, if I'm not mistaken, hang on a second. Uh, here, I Has that been deleted? Craig uh, Morgan's tweets? Yeah, I want to check. Well, I, I'm pretty sure I screenshotted them because I was sending it to the group chat earlier today. Uh, yep, I got them. They've been... No, here it is. Yeah, I got them here. Uh, you, spoke with... Here, I want your reaction to this. I spoke yeah. with Clayton Keller's father, Brian, last night about the controversial tweets that came from his Twitter account in response to the Coyote statement after the Tempe vote uh, on their personal arena and entertainment district. And he said, Wednesday morning, while out of town on business, I was informed by several friends of a couple Twitter messages that were apparently sent from my personal account regarding the vote on the proposed Tempe uh, arena and my son Clayton Keller's future in Arizona. I am writing to inform, writing to inform anyone who read those messages that my Twitter account was hacked and the messages were sent out by the hacker. I want to make clear that I did not authorize those messages and they do not reflect my opinions or views. The matter has been reported and my account is now secure. Everyone who knows me <laughs> knows my opinions are mine and I own them. These were not comments on the matter. So let's continue. Now, uh, I'm sorry for laughing, but, but we know that's bullshit. Or I, I assume that's bullshit. Right. Draw your own conclusion. Now, no, here, wait. Alleged shit. Maybe. Uh-huh. Maybe it's true. Maybe that happened. Right. But what do let's 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 um let's war game this a little bit here. Let's just mm. put this one at the wall. Okay. If your account's hacked, mm. someone says your account's hacked and you look at your account. What do you expect to see from a hacked account? Uh buy Bitcoin, anime porn bots, um fucking uh a, a, anything but a, a, an accurate representation of me. <laughs> yeah. Um see when hackers ha hack accounts, like Steve said, porn or they try to sell you something, which is usually porn or Bitcoin, uh, or they try to make you look bad. So if it's a public figure who has a lot of followers, Clayton Keller's dad is not. Um, so niche. They try to try to. I think like there, there are some like world leaders have had their accounts hacked, and it's like they'll write poo or something like that. Yeah. And be like, oh. um, <laughs> now uh, here's what Clayton Keller's dad is asking you to accept. Okay. They're asking you to accept, he's asking you to accept that not only was his account hacked, but that the hacker knew who Clayton Keller's dad was, knew what his Twitter account was, it was a target knew of how to hack it, but just the one account. Because usually when they hack, they hack on mass, right? Because they yeah. buy the passwords online on the dark web. And he's asking you to uh, accept that Twitter dealt with it within 12 hours. So that was, uh, so Andrew Berkshire pointed that out because he's had his account hacked before and he had the might of Sportsnet behind him mm -hmm. and it still took him two weeks to get his account back. So the least believable part of that story is that it was hacked and dealt with in half a day. No shot. Now let's look at what we know <coughs> That about, or Elon is doing a great job. Now, let's look what we know from the other side. Why is that so hard to believe, Stephen? We know that the Coyotes, behind the scenes, it's starting to come out, filter out now, that there are players, maybe not all of them, but there are players that are complaining regularly to the NHLPA about this. About Mullet play for, Arena specifically. The Arena specifically. Yeah. And not just visiting players, home players. Yeah. Players that play for the Coyotes. We know that the Coyotes' future is in flux. And we'll get to those infamous, the infamous poll in just a second here because the Twitter poll was something else. Oh, <laughs> Lord. oh yeah. Lord. I forgot that happened. Got to that. See, I, I knew we had more prep. How <laughs> jacked are the Coyotes today? Oh, thank God the Leafs did something. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> oh so if you're a father of an NHL player like Clayton Keller, who by all rights should be a bigger star, yeah. um, and you're looking at uh, the trade of his buddy to the Ottawa Senators and his name escapes me and he's a fantastic defenseman and he only eats liver. Chikrin. Jacob Chikrin. Chikrin. Um, <laughs> I know more. I know what he eats, but I couldn't remember his name. Um, Clayton Keller is a is on a fantastic deal, is a fantastic player. And you could understand. And this is why I believe what his father is saying publicly is bullshit. You can understand why a father might say that. You can understand why oh. a dad who oh, yeah. dragged his ass around the country to hockey tournaments and this and that, to see him go to the OHL and leave home early, to see him get drafted would be like, 
what the fuck is this, man? This is supposed to be the NHL. He doesn't even play in a fixed location. That's rough. Like, they're going to have Mullet Arena next year, then what? Yeah. By the way. Well, and that's what they say they're going to do. Everyone we'll who arrogantly told me, oh, why well, are you shitting on Mullet Arena? It's because they're playing there because they're going to get, they're going to get what? The building that was voted against? Shove it. The thing that we said was going to happen, happened. Yeah. And so, so, so then we go to this and this is, this is where it all stems from. Sure. It's the Twitter poll. The oh. Twitter poll, which the Coyotes put out, uh, asked everybody where the Coyotes future home should be. It is still up as far as I know. Um, and the Twitter poll asked for Mesa, Scottsdale, Chandler, right. and Gilbert. Uh, and it said, Pack, we want to hear from you. Where should the Coyotes build their new home? We get to do it as a show. Okay. The three of us get All to right. pick the new location because I haven't voted on the Twitter poll yet. Oh, so oh. It's still available for us. So it's up on the screen. Uh, Adam, if you want to read out the options again that the Mesa. Arizona Coyotes tweeted out. Mesa, Scottsdale, Chandler, and Gilbert. Mm -hmm. I'm there, saying Scottsdale. There's currently 102,000 votes on their Twitter poll about where they should move their team because professional teams usually decide where to move teams based on Twitter polls. They do. They do. Uh, I, I would also like Scottsdale, Steve. I think the you? golf is great. That's where Maddie's from, right? So that's where you... Uh, Maddie? Uh, no, sorry, Austin Matthews. <laughs> Austin, not our Mad Maddie. Matt e. I was like, Maddie's how did here. I know that? <laughs> no, no. That's such an interesting Maddie fact. From Scarborough. Scarborough. Yeah, from Scarborough. Maddie's one of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> our Maddie's uh, from Scarborough. Scarborough-tonian. Yeah. 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 We only hire people from Scarborough. Yes. After the, after the experience with Jesse, we could never hire somebody from the West. No. No. Uh, no. Never no. again. Andrew, Awful decade. And all the most insufferable parts of this company come from <laughs> the West of GTA. Uh, yeah, it's been an awful decade with you guys. Terrible experience. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. Terrible. Horrible. Um, now, I thought you guys might find this interesting before we make our... Oh, we didn't. We Okay. Before we before make Before we thing, make our okay? decision. Yeah. Before we make our decision, I just thought you should know. Actually, you know what? Let's make our decision and I'm going to tell you something. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm going to say Gilbert. He wants to be in Gilbert. Because I yes, don't know he, where that is. <laughs> click whatever one you want. I want to see the results. The, I'm oh, voting by the way, I don't like Scottsdale. that they didn't, they didn't put a show results on there, which I don't like. Mm, I'm voting Scottsdale. Okay, let's vote Scottsdale. Go for it. Oh! 69! 69! 69! 69! 69! Sex number! Sex number! Let's go! Sex number! All right. Now, I thought you should know that, and I don't know whether this went up right after or right before that tweet went up, but people have been absolutely lambasting that tweet. <laughs> like, right. not right. like media people have been like, everybody's like, what the fuck is going on with that? And I thought you should know that you could apply to be the senior manager social media for the Arizona Coyotes in Scottsdale. What? They have a job posting, which you can apply for right now from teamworkonline.com. Do you want to see it? I'm going to send it to you, Jesse. We sure. can go through the, uh, if you want to apply for the Coyotes. Actually, I think it'd be a sweet job working for an NHL team doing social media. I just thought it was very funny that uh, on the job posting, it said Scottsdale. I thought that How was the fuck do you know? That, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, this is weird. Why job summary. The Arizona Coyotes are looking for a seasoned social media marketer to drive engagement and reach our social channels, expand Coyotes reach and develop franchise social content. This role requires a strong understanding of brand voice, social trends, content trends, and how to build a rabid community. You are an expert storyteller. This role combines an understanding of culture and sports and how they will continue across multiple social channels. You push the boundaries and are not afraid to try something new in social. I don't know. Like saying, where should our next arena be? Must uh, enjoy toxic work environments, allegedly. And have a strong, strength. And have a strong desire to lead in the industry. You mix game action, creativity, and humor and interact with our fans. This role will report to the senior director of social media. And we'll work Justin closely Fisher. with the cross-functioning partners, brand colleagues, video production, creative ticket marketing, merchandise development, local marketing, multicultural marketing, corporate partnerships, uh, supported by those from creative content, video production, marketing, operations to develop engaging social media strategies. The position will push our mission to change how sports teams build their brand. And there's a ton of tasks and responsibilities, but what you should know is they are looking for five to six years of experience in a social media role. Mm. Strong understanding of sports and media environment as well. Why does it say Scottsdale? If you apply for this job, I hope you own an RV. 
Yeah. Like where the where well, you, you probably go? Yeah, you where do you go? Where's my office? Yeah, like it, honestly, after this season, if you pull it, where's my office? If you if you got this, like if you got this job, you'd have to say like, hey, listen, I so appreciate that you want to hire me for this, but if I sign a lease. Yeah. You guys should have to buy me out of it if you're leaving. Does this job come with a meal card? Next season. Can I eat at ASU? Next season, <laughs> the Arizona Coyotes will be playing at Mullet Arena. Like until know, they won't. Until they don't. We know that. It's until they don't. After next year, what's their future? But what was Bill Daly's statement? Bill Daly's statement was yeah, something to the effect of Bill Daly. I'm Gary Bettman, but less likable. I love Looney Hot Dog Night at the Rogers Center. That's what Billy, Is that what he said? That's what Billy Daly he said. He doesn't enjoy Looney Hot Dog Night at the Rogers <laughs> here's, Center. Here's what he said, and this is where the NHL gets you. I do not envision a scenario in which the Coyotes are not playing in Mullet Arena next year. Yeah. If, if it was the Toronto Maple Leafs or the Montreal Canadiens or the New York Rangers, let's say it's the New York Rangers. He's like, no, they're playing at Madison Square. What are you, fucking stupid? <laughs> What are you fucking asking me for? Stop think, bugging me. I but but I do not envision a scenario. He doesn't envision a scenario until one becomes visible. You didn't guess what? You didn't envision losing that vote, did you, Bill? Yeah. Hey, hey there, William. You didn't, you didn't envision losing that. I would say, Steve, I would go so far as to say that foresight is not their strength. <laughs> no. If it were, they would have stayed in Scottsdale. So I think... I think well, they were never in Scottsdale. Where was the first? No, one? they never were. They were, they were in, in Phoenix. The downtown, downtown Phoenix, Phoenix one. The, the Sun. I thought arena. it was in. Scottsdale. They were in the Sun. No, no. They had so they had the. They were gonna build their next arena in Scottsdale, and then the um, oh, the I owner at the so. time took the other arena. Oh yeah, they had an option. That they were gonna go to Scottsdale, and then that fell through, and he wanted to go the other one that they they built, and then that one was unsuccessful. I, I bet they, they rejected again. about that choice. Yeah, hmm. no, it's bad. Bad decision. Scottsdale's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that fucking golf tournament they have the uh, waste management open was one of the coolest things ever in the sports calendar. I don't know if you guys you guys don't really follow just golf. dudes from Jersey. Oh, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> they have like uh, it's more of a regular sports f- uh, stadium feel for this golf tournament they have every year in Scottsdale. And it's just a bunch of drunk dudes sitting around the green yelling at golfers. Oh, I love that. that, You guys must have seen the highlights every year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if if you watch the Netflix show, even it shows that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a big part of uh, Full Swing. You've got to watch. Steve, have you seen Full Swing? No. It's so good. It's so much fun. It's it's just entertainment, right? Like traditional golf people traditionally, you know, hate anything that's not traditional. So if you ask a, a golf person previous to this, they'll be like, this is so stupid. So <laughs> stupid. But if you're sort of like, if you've always sort of watched golf, but never got involved in the characters beyond like Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson, mm-hmm. um, man, what a great like uh, gateway drug. It's great. Yeah. It's spectacular. And that Arizona Open is just. Bonkers. Yeah. The Waste Management bonkers. Open's doing a lot of good stuff. For bonkers. Golf. So much fun. Yeah. Um, I want to throw this out we there too. one day. I am so down to go to that. <laughs> we should have a trip uh, to Scottsdale. Uh, uh, like one, day we're gonna have to, we're, one day we're going to have to have a conversation about how... <laughs> In an uh, RV. Uh, how how much fun golf is compared to what it used to be. It's amazing. It's so it's so much different. I now. love golf. Um, Wherever we go to watch golf, I want to wear a banana suit. Uh, well, that would be the place to do it. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, the Waste Management Open, yeah! you could. They all have their shirts off. You, yeah. can, you can do that. One of those all be in the background. And like, I'll be super serious. I'll just have my banana suit and glasses and I'll be holding a beverage. Just Yeah, you think this is a joke, but we can get you no. a banana suit and we can go to the Waste Management. We can open. each pick a fruit. <laughs> we can be fruit of the loom if you want. Okay, I want to be a banana. What do you want to be? I don't uh, listen. Well, I, I'll leave it to a vote. We'll put it on our discord. Adam, I think you would make a great avocado, but the pit is just your belly. Oh, so oh. The green. we cut a hole oh, and you're I you're like doing the that. green thing and then we cut a hole and a bit of an avocado shirt. Yeah, yeah I do. And then that's the pit. There you go. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, that's a barrel. That's a fucking legend barrel right there. <laughs> Let's go. Um, hey, what are you? What are you? Uh, uh, what's a tall fruit? You're going to be an asparagus. You're going asparag- to be an asparagus. Asparagus. We okay. both landed on oh, asparagus. A carrot? I like oh, a carrot. Carrots carrot. are really long. Carrots are long. And then I can have like some a I can green do my hat. hair. Yeah. Like, up, like carrot. Could we like, dye my green? Yeah, I'll dye my hair green. Pineapple would work. Too. That'd be sick. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing with the the carrot thing. The pineapple, you'd be carrying a lot of stuff. Oh, you'd be hot. Because I gotta be thick. Well, that's, that's a pineapple. Th- that's what I'm worried about the, the carrot, avocado. Carrot, I can be 
slender. Well, yeah. that's that's what the no. That's why your you're perfect for. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'll that's be okay. <laughs> I thought you should know that. <laughs> that's um, why you got your belly out. So you can air. You can air. We it thought out. of all this already, man. <laughs> All right, we got we got to play it. Wait, somebody it said that's to the waste management Woo! open. I don't know. Is this uh, is this on my camera? Somebody said that's to the waste management open as fruit. Yeah, we need to do it. <laughs> um, uh, and it would just be lit up on TV. I know we'd be hammered. Oh, yeah. um, gunned. Uh, gunned. Uh, we'll also be lit up because I'm fucking get wasted for that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Elliot Friedman has tweeted that Logan Cooley, the third overall draft pick by the Arizona Coyotes, will be returning to the University of Minnesota next year. Is this dude, is he signed? I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know if he's signed. I Wait, no, I don't think you can sign. Yeah, you, no, wait, yeah, Matt Nice wasn't, was he? No. So, uh, this is this is a conversation for down the Coyotes fans are going to be so mad at this, just so you know. Well, listen. What could happen? Just say this. What could happen is they better draft a shitload, like with all their draft picks, they better draft a shitload of guys out of major junior because guys who are committed to colleges are going to sit at those colleges until their rights expire and they are dealt. You think so? Or they just sign wherever else. It's possible. And now listen, he's not the first player to ever do this. Um, uh, Eric Johnson, I know, didn't play the year after he was picked first overall. Um, James Van Riemsdyk, I think, was the first like top two player or whatever to mm-hmm. spend his first two years after getting drafted back at school. Yep. And there was some worry about that, but obviously he ended up going to the Flyers. Let me th- let me throw this at you. It's tricky. Um, it's a little frightening. The Minnesota Golden Gulf Gophers play at 3M Arena in Mariucci. Um, uh, they have a capacity of 10,000. So he'll be playing at an arena that is more than three times the size of the Coyotes' current capacity. Because remember, everybody keeps saying Mullet Arena's got 5,000 seats. It's not. After the, retro, after the, the upgrades, it was actually 3,200 seats. So... So Logan Cooley will be playing in front of more people than the Arizona Coyotes in theory next year on a per game basis. To be fair to Logan Cooley, we see these guys at these high level university programs go back all the time. Yeah, Matt Nyes like, did We it. just made the example of Matt Nyes. But he's yeah. going back twice. He was drafted, drafted last, last year. He's like, going back twice as the third overall pick. He's, he's It's go- different from Nyes. He's gone back once. But he's going back twice. Right, he went back once, and now he's committed to go back twice. No, I. So if he was drafted last June, yes, I, I don't consider that going back the first. It time. absolutely is. I, he's I, the third I, overall pick. He could have gone straight into the show. Yeah, see, third overall pick. It happens all the time. Seeing how that draft played out, I don't think anybody really stuck. Well, who was it? Slavkovsky. There were a handful. Like, look at Shane Wright's journey. Oh my god! You know, yeah. I, so I don't, I don't blame him the first time. This is kind of, I think, the first time I would consider him going back and missing it. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to give Coyotes fans some leeway here for us not to blow up the world and being like, "Hey, you're going to lose prospects." Yeah. So, <laughs> I, well, I've already said there's precedent for this, but um, I would avoid drafting players who uh, can basically choose where they yeah, control their rights. Yeah, control their rights. What, what's the what's the deal here? If he sits out. What is it? I think it's two four years. Oh, so it'd be it's like a long three time. More. It's a yeah. long time. I can't time. imagine. I don't think that's going to happen, guys. The third overall pick making it four years. Because, I mean, the really appealing thing about the Coyotes is nobody plays for them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you have an opportunity to, uh, listen, NHL practice facility? I don't know. NHL arena? I don't know. NHL salary? Yeah, they have to. <laughs> so you can go there and even if you're making league men you're making three quarters of a million dollars did Blake different. Wheeler not do that he was drafted by the Coyotes yes but I believe he was traded mm-hmm. no after the Phoenix Coyotes no after the Phoenix Coyotes were not able to come to terms with Wheeler he was drafted in 04 July 1st 2008 he signed an entry level contract with the Bruins Ooh. the Coy- Coyotes they did receive compensation price? Because that was the rule at the time. Remember, even when you hired a coach from another team, they got a compensatory second round pick. 
Oh baby. So so oh, wow. So there's precedent. I forgot that. This has happened. There's precedent for this disaster scenario, and it's fifth overall pick, Blake Wheeler. Now yeah. we got third overall pick. Logan, Logan Cooley. Cooley. Wow. Now that is a different scenario. Who knows what the reasons were? I I, I just if that this way. were a Leaf player, we would one hundred percent be talking about oh fuck. Well, that's because we're Leaf thir- fans. Yeah. <laughs> and what the worst is always right there. Exactly. You know, and so we would 100% be talking about, uh-oh, the Leafs are in a pickle. Mm-hmm. So in the uh, spirit of fairness, you're in a pickle. And Logan Cooley would only just have to play out his college career. That's like, it. he wouldn't really miss any hockey. He could no. just stay at university for the tenure of his yeah, career. And, and not then... make any money. And rip yeah. some suds, bruh. <laughs> okay. Some sudskis. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> listen, there's a lot going on. Uh, uh, it, there's a lot. There's a lot happening. It, uh, before we started, Adam said it's going to be a little shorter. We did two hours. No, Fuck. And we're not. I, I, <laughs> I, one, please let me leave. One quick story. One quick story. No. It's a good one, and it's flying under Do the radar. You want this video or not, Raphael? <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, Raffaele Toussaint, Toussaint. I think is how you pronounce her name. That's She's a Hyundai. French Canadian. And she's the first female ever to be selected to join the Canadian men's national para ice Olympic hockey team and will be competing at the world championships uh, second, which is the second highest level, obviously, other than the Paralympic Games. So I just wanted to say a shout out to her in her own words. She said at 12, I wanted to play for the Canadian men's team and go to the Paralympics with this team. It is eight years later. I'm 20 years old and I'm achieving one of the biggest dreams and goals in recent years to be the first woman included on the men's national para hockey team. So I think that's, that's pretty cool. Sick. I just wanted to throw that out there because that's getting no play and I don't know why. What is her name? Oh man, I, Raffaele Toussaint, I think. I think it's I think it's just Raphael or Raphael pronounced Frenchly, and I can't do that. Yeah, uh, we need Julian McKenzie. This, oh yeah, he'd do it beautifully, and you'd be like, you know what? Be a smart guy, being smart, yeah, kind, generous. No, because that's that's spelled the exact same way my grandfather's name was spelled. Actually, oh, was it? Except, but there's accents and stuff on it. Okay, so I don't. No, if she's Italian, I'm just I'm just saying it's it's Raphael, but pronounced well, there in a you way go. that I'm not capable of. She congratulations to her. Also, one th- one last thing before we go here, um, and this is for our YouTube audience, and you should check this out, Jesse. Uh, how, what do we rate this uh, pencil drawing of Steve uh, out of ten? This is from Andrea. She said, "My fiance did a pencil portrait of Steve, and we love uh, uh, we'd love for him to see it." And there you go, Stephen. That's so sick. Yeah, I've, I've seen this already. That's and I know what picture you used as your reference. It's a it's a photo of me and Leo. And obviously you took Leo out of it. That's no, that's awesome. Can you blame them? I like I <laughs> <laughs> just think it's shit. That's I like it. Great shot that you gave me my is, moles. Your 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 smile is perfect there. That is. Your yeah, smile. you captured how when I smiled, one eye is bigger than the other. You uh, captured the my Neanderthal brow, the fact that I have a little bit of gray hair in there. Uh, did you get my chip tooth? No, you didn't give me the chip tooth. I uh, it's oh, this yeah. one. Yeah, I, I never it. noticed that. Yeah, I What'd was. You do? I was literally like adjusting my sweater one day. You know how like you yeah. bite your sleeve, and I chipped it. Wow. <laughs> mm. Oh, the stubble's really good too. The neck freckles. You got a lot of neck hair. You do have a lot. You're big into the neck You're beard. You're almost a neck yeah. beard guy, aren't you? I, I need Are you to, a neck uh, beard guy? No, neck I beard. just I haven't trimmed it since I You hang out on incel Reddit? <laughs> it. Oh no. <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> When you when you have a neck beard and you're like look yeah, up we, and your we, chin goes into it, you yeah. kind of look like a beaver. <laughs> we t- we t- <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that. <laughs> hey, neck beard Reddit, and I will have some thoughts about you. We actually have a have a chat forum about how awesome uh, Blue is. Drew, what are you doing here? Okay. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh man. All right. Ooh. Ooh, all when right. Bobrovsky wins the Conn Smythe Trophy, how is Drew going to spin that into this team could win with a $10 million player or something like that and make all of hockey Twitter mad? He'll find a way.
Oh, I like, don't have the tweet form, but it's going to be there. Drew was born in it and molded by it because <laughs> he's an Avs fan who grew up with a Leaf fan brother. Yeah. yeah. So if it seems like he's experienced in this and gets off on this, mm-hmm. I assure you it's because. Yeah. And he's, <laughs> he's been right. winning for 25 years. His brother has come up on the losing end of every sports argument for his entire life. And I just feel bad every for that guy. Every single one. All of them. All of them. Do you have the mole on my eyelid? That one. Oh, you do? Uh, yeah. Oh, and you got the right eye as well. Ooh. Oh, one last thing. Donovan Bailey, 100-meter uh, uh, gold medal winner for uh, Canada, I'm sorry to do this, is joining uh, Nico Sparks and Snoop Dogg uh, in their bid to purchase the Ottawa Senators. Thought. That is very cool. Yeah, very cool. One of my childhood idols, Mr. 9.84 himself. Let's wrap it up. We love you. It's going to be a crazy weekend. We're going to be back Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday next week. Mm-hmm. We did need a bit of a long weekend. Happy long weekend, Oh, everybody. screw the both of you. Enjoy your time off. I have a video to make. Ha, 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 ha. LFR, boy. Steve. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Follow the guys on Twitter. At Steve underscore Dangle. At Adam W-Y-L-D-E. And at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.